but it's hot here today, man. I know it's nowhere near as hot as you, but we got, I think we got 40 degrees tomorrow. Holy shit. Which for England. Yeah. There, fucking there, really is, there is no heat. I haven't left the house in weeks. It's I like guess they in the air conditioning. I don't surprise you. That doesn't surprise so I don't blame you. I was meant to say that doesn't surprise me, and I don't blame you at the same time. <laughs> how's everything uh how's everybody doing? What's going on? Good. Fucking good, really. I'm well, awesome. Who wants to go first? Ben, you put your pictures up today, things are looking good, like they're coming together. Somebody told me that Ben should do classic. Yeah, I'd have to cut left my left fucking leg off. You're a heavy guy, man. That's a hard job my, to get my, down to that way. My, I think my weight limit is 227 pounds. I'm currently 262. You could drop 40 pounds. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I saw a leg off, I'll make 40 pounds. Just, stop, well, tra- just stop training. <laughs> well, you're 260, what, five right now? 262. By the time you're shredded, you'll be 245. So you really only need to, <laughs> you need, you need to sauna away like 17 pounds. Do, okay. do, what John, you do what John Meadows did when he said he John, oh, fucking God. yeah. Dude, I, I was with John when he did that in Tampa Bay. Tampa, he fucking sat in a sauna for like nine hours. Oh, man. I can't do 20 minutes in a sauna. It, yeah. no, obviously not straight for nine hours, but it was like in and out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was oh fucking insane, man. He looked like... No. I have a photo on my phone. He looks like he honestly is dead. It's Dedication, like, mate. Yeah. No, anyway. I get it. I, I, I do have more classic lines. I don't have big thick dense round muscle i have heavy fucking bones apparently i don't know what it is i'm i'm heavy Big i am bro. heavy you're also tall too you're six one so like you yeah i know but for the classic is height to weight ratio right but the weight oh, ratio right. this is this is what john and i were talking about with you on last friday saturday yeah. the weight limit needs to be much higher if it was closer to 235 240 i might be able to the last time i was on stage i was 248 yeah, yeah. That was three. That was three years ago. You know what I think it is. Uh, every time I see somebody who weighs a lot, but they don't necessarily look like they weigh that much, it's because they have big legs. Yeah, like you're, yes. like you're, you're, you're legs two, are huge. Like you're two sixty five, but I bet you if you, it's because your legs are your most dominant part. You know what I mean? Oh my, all well, my quads. I don't have any hamstrings. Please. There's a lot of dense. There's a lot of dense muscle on your thighs, isn't there? I'm just saying, like Ben, yeah. for example, like Ben Pakulski went on stage. I think at the first Flex Pro that we did together in 2011, I think he went on stage at like 280. Oh my god! But Ben's upper body doesn't look like it's 280. You know no, no, because it's especially that mobile, his arms. Yeah. But it's all his arms are very weak. But his legs were. But his legs were so big. I think that's where the weight comes from. Like Antoine, Antoine's got that issue too. I think. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Big like old Ant- legs. That's- Antoine's 265 or 70 pounds right now, but it looks like yeah. the, the bulk of it's in his legs, like his calves, his quads, his hamstrings. Yeah. He's not crazy. I did, I did get a lot of people um, asking me why I think I've got bad legs. And, uh, and I, th- I want to clarify, I, I don't think I've got bad legs. What I think is I could have better legs, right? What? I should have better legs for, for the loads I'm moving, the way I can lift. They probably should be bigger than they are. This is what my point was, right? More so than I have bad legs. There's a difference. I, right? I think you got squat. I think you got squatters' legs. Mm. Like yeah. there's a diff- there's a difference between bodybuilders' legs and squatters' legs. Yeah. Like but I know that's... it sounds really really um, obvious and si- like simple and probably hard to fathom, but I don't know squatting as a you know you're a very consistent squat. That's been your base movement for many years, and I. I think they, that that alone. I'm not saying you only do that, but that being a priority does give a different look than when you really focus on all the other shit. Well, what I said to Fuad was, I think I could improve my legs if I stop squatting for a period of time, right? I I, I reckon you could as well. But I can't because emotionally, I don't want to do that, right? Exactly. I'm happy. You enjoy. I'm not. Yeah. yeah, you know, if I'm looking at going for a my pro card, or if I was, to, I would reconsider. Yeah. But for yeah. me. The intrinsic payoff I get from squatting, yeah, yeah. forget it. No, I totally, I get that. Going to carry on. I think I get the, that. I, get um, that. I think the main issue when uh, also online when you say something like, because this has happened to me, right? If you say like, "Oh, I'm fat," or "I'm out of shape," or "My legs yeah. suck," or "My arms suck," inevitably you'll get like fifty people who are like, "No, man, you're crazy. I would wish I was as fat as you," or whatever. But they don't understand that when we when we say these things, it's relative to who you're looking at. It's relative to yeah. who you're going to stand next to, and it's relative to who you're. It's also relative to your standard in your head. So, yeah. like, yeah, I know I look better than, you know, I know I'm I'm lean con- in comparison to like 
the average population. But when I say I'm fat, it's because I'm talking about the two percent of people that are going to be on stage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, and and, and to your point, my very first ever show, I'd have, I'd been training with Luke for eight months already. Like that's my yardstick. That's right. It's Luke Sandro. Right. So I'm like yeah. anything. Oh, my comparison is to Luke all the time. We'd be in the gym every day. My comparison is to that guy. Yeah. You can yeah. never. You can I'm, never. You can actually never feel overly good about your physique when you train with Luke. <laughs> it was always the way. Even even with the short period I had, like you can't help but re like um, revere what he had, and you're like, "Wow, shit! I better step my game up." And you just can't help but focus on how awesome his physique was. Yeah. It's very very hard to feel good about yourself, isn't it, Ben? <laughs> I think yeah, you have to have thick skin. He has well, a really thick skin. <laughs> well, I think if you, you know, I, I had. Uh, Branch Warren and Seth Ferrosi on the podcast on Monday yeah. and Branch said it best. He's like, I never woke up a day in my career and liked the way I looked. No, you can't. You and can't. It's that's, like, when it's, that's when the job's done and it shouldn't be done. I, I think if you have high aspirations, if you're like a true bodybuilder, your work is never finished. Like you never look at your body and go, okay, it's perfect. Yeah. It's like but always something. How, how are you going to put yourself through that pain and hurt and suffering if you're happy, if you're content? Hmm. That mindset is what drives you, right? That mindset is what gets you up at five in the morning, doing that fasted cardio, going back in the gym when you're on subtle calories and, yeah. and training heavy still. Yeah. Because you're not happy, you're not satisfied. I always you notice that. Sorry, go ahead, James. No, I was just going to say the same. You know there's more in you. So you, yeah. st you still go. I always notice the guys that are the most happy with their physiques are the guys that don't progress. Like you ever, you ever meet like an amateur that's like really cocky and arrogant. He's like, I got it all figured out. And, but they never make it past a certain point because they, they're yeah. too happy with what they have. I yeah. don't think I've met a pro yet who is like, I don't have something to work on. Yeah. There's some that are like that. Like Dexter has nothing to work on. Right. Like there's some people have are, are fine, but like, I bet you Dexter still wakes up in the morning and goes, Eh, I could use a little bit more arms, or I could use a little bit more this, or I use a little bit more that. That's probably what still drives them after, you know, being fifty years old, right? Man, yeah. Next time, yeah. it wasn't until Branch, Branch said it wasn't until he retired that he would look back and go, "Oh, I actually look pretty good." <laughs> I, I, I love, I love Branch's physique at certain points. Like honestly, there's this whole like thing about him not being aesthetic. There was a few times in, the, uh, I think, like around 2005, I found him actually to be quite aesthetic. Well, early on his career, he was very aesthetic. He was yeah. definitely he was definitely lower body heavy, but it was still pretty to look at. Yeah, and before yeah. he had like the, the injuries, he was quite yeah. bubbly up top. I found him to have a really nice shape. I, yeah. I, I was I would have loved to have looked like Branch. But even at the end, people would be like, "Oh, his his symmetry sucks," and I'm like, "You don't know the definition of symmetry." Yeah, and also, like his symmetry, his symmetry was always perfect. His yeah. aesthetics maybe weren't yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But also, like you can't take in. You have to take into account as well that someone like brought the density of someone like Branch, like how important that is as well. Like, yeah. there's not many bodybuilders on the planet that had that same amount of muscle well, density. Branch, without that density, is a two twelver, right? Yeah. So that shows how big he is. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I don't. Okay, wait. Before no, Branch comes no, around to true, shoot no, me in the head, it's true. It's true. His his frame. Is a two twelve like he could stand next to a flex and he's the yeah. same build, the height, but then you put yeah. all that muscle tissue on him, like you said, with and then you got those legs. The legs. Because those yeah, legs man. those legs are yeah. so dense. His weight, he's never making two twelve. He can dream of it. Yeah. He's got so yeah. much density on him. I uh yeah. it's weird, you know, there's certain people like you know, for for the amount of shit he takes, I don't think anybody really any real bodybuilder would never give him shit for anything. Because it's, he's one of these guys you know there's some people when they speak you just listen yeah, yeah. it's that's branch he doesn't fu he doesn't fuss around with like you know this macro and that macro and this this training split and that training split and all this he's like look just go fucking lift some fucking weight yeah and, it, and it's just the when when he says it to you you feel like such a pussy for yeah. even even considering anything else <laughs> it's just yeah. like, but uh no, anyway, it was a it was a good podcast. It was good to have him on. But um, I'm gonna I'm gonna check that one out. Uh, James, how's everything going for you, man? Good, really good. I was uh, I was quite um, quite happy this morning. I woke up to um, Patrick done an interview with uh, MD, yeah. and uh, he just said, and I didn't know it was obviously an interview with Patrick, and he had just some really nice words to say. They spoke about me briefly, and it 
put me in a really good mood for the day. So um, it's been a really positive day. Went to the gym fully, you know, fully focused, fully energized. Yeah. Uh, had a had a good session. I've done some check in pictures for Patrick, so I've sent them to him. He has voice noted me, but I'll check it after the podcast, see what he says. So yeah, everything's good. Like it's been a good day. Feeling um feeling purposeful. Are you the kind of athlete that needs? I, I don't want to say need. Maybe needs is too strong, but do you get charged up when your coach is like happy with what you're doing? Absolutely, one hundred percent. It it reinforces what I feel already. So um, that's why, like I said, that's why I like working with Patrick, and that's why perhaps me and Chris didn't have the same synergy because the relationship with Patrick is a little bit more personable. Um, and there's a lot of that praise and const- there's criticism as well, but it's praise as well. And I definitely work off praise. So, so you just want to feel connected though. Cause I know I've worked with Chris yeah. and Chris is, I think he's more connected with these guys that have been on for a while. Of course he builds a relationship yeah. over time. Yeah. yeah, yeah I can yeah. imagine that. Um, yeah. And, and that's understandable because you shouldn't invest your trust just in everybody for the sake of it, just because yeah. they pay you some money. Yeah, but Patrick, um, Patrick's the opposite, though. Because Patrick, has, yeah, yeah. From, the, from the, like, I don't even work with Patrick, and I feel like yeah. he could coach I, me. I think with Patrick, because what he does is he does a bit of background, um, like, research of who you are, and he probably already liked who you are as a person before he even came on the show. So he already builds a bit of a familiarity with the people he's speaking to, yeah. um, which then helps obviously when you start talking because he's already aware of who you are so i think that's yeah. chris chris doesn't need to know anyone is chris is chris you yeah, know what i mean yeah, but there's probably how many people probably message him every day and he's like i don't have a fucking clue who you are yeah. but um i'll give it a go and i think that's the difference so taking nothing away from chris because chris is fantastic the fact that he can do what he does and yeah. it works obviously with many people i'm just someone that um yeah I, i'm quite personable and um it's because when i've helped clients in the past they're like my best mate mm. like i really spend a lot of time talking to them i spend time with them and to get the best out of them, I've always felt it has to be that way, but that's just me personally. So I've never, I've never done that. I don't, I don't know how you are, Ben, but I, when I, when I was coaching a lot, yeah, and maybe it's because that's how I was coached. Like I never yeah. had, I never had coaches that were like, you know, me before me and John. Me and John are actually really close now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Before me and John, my coaches were always like, "Here's your X's and O's. I'll talk yeah. to you next week." Yeah. So that was kind of always my coaching style. I never wanted to be friends because I felt like. My, my theory behind being friends is people jump coaches a lot. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to be friendly because then I'm going to be upset when this person fucking leaves. Yeah. If I, if I keep it to the X's and O's, then he can leave and I'm not going to be. I get that. I get you know that. I mean? I've, I've always been right. Like most, like one of my, my best mates, Louis, like he worked with me for a while and won a British title with me. But I still, I even suggested to him to go and work with Justin Compton. It's like I've I've done that. You know what I've I mean? Done, yeah. So I don't I don't know. I don't. Mind. I've had people leave yeah. as well, of course. Um, yeah. And yeah, it just comes down to how you feel, doesn't it? Um, mm. I suppose how much you feel invested in them. Um, yeah. I've been really. I suppose I've just been really fortunate with the people that I have helped in the past, and I and I haven't helped too many because I I don't like to coach too much because I always felt that it takes away from my own focus. Yeah. Um, to a degree, you know, I've it's done nice that. to help because. I know what you mean about being having a relationship though, because I have done that. I have I can think of a couple clients off the top of my head that yeah we reached a certain point. And I'm like, hey, you should go probably find somebody better than me, man. I'm like, you've reached a point where like I can't take you any further. Yeah. yeah. So I Ben, you. Ben, how are you with this kind of thing? Are you like really, really tight, personable with your clients, or to a point? Um, they all have my WhatsApp, and some of them choose to use it more than others. Um, I would say. I have a good rapport with most, if not all of my clients. Um, but we don't have general chit chat. You know what I mean? We don't yeah. have like, like, Hey, what are you up to today? Kind of thing. Well, um, let me, let me ask you this. So let's say they send a check. Like this used to happen to me, right? Yeah. Uh, someone would send their check in, but then they would send like a personal thing with it. And I would disregard the personal part and I would answer the check in. No, I always no. address. No, I, I address them. Fuck, fuck your personal feelings. <laughs> no, it's not. Listen, honestly, man, it was to me. To me, coaching was. Listen, I'll be honest. With business. You. Well, I've been I've been fucking burned a lot. Not necessarily by coaches, but in this industry, I've signed contracts, and I won't mention with who. Yeah. But I have signed contracts with various companies, and they, inevitably, they all say the same thing: we're family. We want you to yeah. be part of our family, blah, blah, blah. And then you catch an injury or you do bad in a show and they're like, oh, we got to let you go. I'm like, I thought we were fucking family. Yeah. Like you just fucking, that's it. You just boom out the door. I hear that. And uh, so I don't, 
I got to a point where I stopped believing the family bullshit. I'm like, no, this yeah. is business. And that's kind of how I treated my coaching business as well. It was like, that's business. You know, it's not so. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm more, I'm probably somewhere in between the two of you. Yeah. By the sounds of things. It's not for, for me. It's not straight business. Um, and I'll never, like if I see my phone, the clients message me, I don't ever go, ah, oh, I'll get that later. I didn't even I'm give them. Like, I'm, I'm always were, like, what's, what's happening? What's going they, on? Yeah, I know. They never had my phone number. <laughs> so, yeah. But I, but that, but that's because of the, of where I came from. Like, that's a new thing. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. when I, when I work with Chad Nichols or even I work with Laura Benetti, some of you might know who Laura Benetti is. She was a bodybuilder back in the day, but I never got their phone numbers. Ch yeah. Chad, I worked with Chad for three fucking years. The only time he called me was like a day or two out from a show. Yeah. We literally do an entire off season, entire prep just on the fucking email. So I just, I, I just continued kind of what I learned. Like I was like that with Hani too, for a long time, me and Hani didn't talk on the phone. So Shit, wasn't it, um, wasn't it back in the day with Ronnie and Chad where they'd send, he'd send Polaroids. In the yeah, post, yeah, 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 yeah. you'd have to yeah. FedEx the Polaroid. Imagine yeah, that, eh? Yeah. Holy shit! Um, Imagine how you freak out. You'd be like, I send my pictures, and you'd be like, waiting for a response. <laughs> Yeah, can you imagine? Because now people yeah. now people email a photo, and like, if you don't get back to them in an hour, they're like, "Hey, did you get this my check-in?" <laughs> I did do a story on this on my Instagram a few weeks back, and I'm going to put it out there now because I know some of my clients watch this. If you email me a check-in, like it's 2020, right? My phone lets me know when I have an email. I check my emails. You don't need to send me an email and then WhatsApp me to tell me you sent me a fucking email. Did you get my email? I'm good. By I'm good. Way. I'll I'll get round to it. You, yeah. Leave me the fuck alone. Well, it's I kind of understand if somebody's dieting and you got to make some changes if they're especially if they're like four weeks out or something like that. But I would get that from like people in the off season, and I'm like, look, man, your your diet is not going to change in the next three hours. Like you're you're okay, just you know, don't worry or, about it. Or they're like, or they're like, I sent my check check in, and I'm like, yeah, no, I got it. Like, oh, okay. Um, well, I'm about to go food shopping. I'm like, buy the same fucking foods. It's just the, yeah. like, <laughs> the it shit. might you might you're gonna get less or more rice. Buy yeah. rice. Like, I don't want <laughs> you know to say but, but that's another th Actually, that raises a, a, a discussion as well. Like, the whole... People are so fickle that they think if you don't make changes every week, that you're not a good coach. That's right? And that's what pissed me off a lot, is that they expect you to be able to introduce something new or take something away, yep. make an adjustment. But if the ball is rolling, and the ball is rolling well, there's a reason. And that always it's frustrated the fuck out of me because I thought, listen, I'm the fucking professional here. Nothing needs to change because I haven't said it needs to and everything's going right. So if you want to sack me off as a coach because you think I don't change your diet enough, feel free and fuck off. Yeah. And well, that's, the that's ideal where I 100%. As, as a, from a coach's point of view, the ideal scenario is we don't, ch don't change a thing. Shit. Whether if we're in a prep, sweet, don't change anything. We made amazing progress. We can get another week out of this. Keep going. Yeah. Off season, trajectory. You're, but I, you're in the zone, keeping the groove, stay as you are. But I think what James means, or maybe if James means, because this is what I was, what I used to experience. I could change the food it, amount, right? Like, let's say I had a, I had a diet. I could change the rice, increase the rice, increase the steak, whatever. They would want a new diet. And I'm like, mm. look, man, these are the seven foods that I eat. These are the seven foods I've been eating for the last 20 fucking years. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, this is it. This is what you're getting. And this all is what you're getting, son. <laughs> All we're going to do is increase or decrease this amount of food. And it's the, they get, they get this, uh, they get this feeling that they want variety. Well, why didn't we add bagels? Why didn't we add pop, add pop tarts? Why didn't we? And I'm like, because everything's the way it is supposed to be. Right. Like, but yeah. I think it's, it's not just, they want to change in amount. They want to change in the diet. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, when I, I don't, are we going to, when, when are we, when are we going to be putting jam in this? When are we having jelly? Well, I put as jelly. This, uh, this is another thing. This is another thing. People see what I do because I put a lot of what I do up, and they're like, yeah. they expect to do what I'm doing. I'm like, of course. Well, for, well, you are not me for one, and I'm special. But I'm saying you're not me. You're not doing the same shit as me. Plus, yeah. also, when I was doing hit cardio, none of you were asking to do fucking hit cardio, <laughs> were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah it's yeah. like they, it's like you ate a pop tart. They're like, well, how come we don't get pop tarts? But they don't yeah, say yeah. It. they don't say it when you're doing 20 minutes of fucking hit. Yeah, no, it's uh, every, yeah, no, it's funny, man, the, the the dynamic. But obviously, you like doing it, Ben. Uh, I've gotten away from mm -hmm. it. I don't, I don't coach anymore. Anybody who, anybody, there's people who've been messaging me for coaching. 
anybody who messaged me for coaching, talk to Ben. And if Ben's full, talk to Justin Harris. That's that's my that's my path so, boss. That's why that's my go tos. Those are my go tos. That's right. Yeah. Um. Anything else going on this week? Any other new information we need to know? James, how many weeks out are you all. anyway? Nine now. Uh, it'll be nine this weekend. Yeah, nine this weekend. Mate. Have you had a cheat meal yet? No, it's Patrick. Are you mad? <laughs> oh, I meal. have a develop. I have a development. What? Go on. I tried. I added in. And I've never taken it before. I added in cardarine. The, Heard a lot about the, uh, the SARM. Well, I'm not technically it's not a SARM. If you watch any of Greg Duchette's videos, it is. A, a, it is a SARM. No, it, no, it's not. It's not a SARM. It's a. Is it, is it a PARP or PR? What the fuck is that? I don't it, even know what that is. It's uh, exactly. it's a different. Oh, right. It's not. It, it's not in the Psalm family. They just sell it on Psalm websites because it's okay. Well, Adam, anyway. all all I know about it, JP told me it was good for lowering lowering cholesterol. That's about it. So yeah, it reduces inflammation, lowers cholesterol. The the main thing I've taken it for. Well, there's another thing as well. Is it, it preferentiates fat metabolism over glucose metabolism? It's another benefit to it. But also it increases quite drastically and very almost immediately cardio output or cardiac output. Yeah, but I'm doing steady state cardio anyway. I don't need to have more cardio output cardiac output. I, I I I push no but it makes whatever you're currently doing, it would make it feel easier. Right. So if you stay at the same cardio pace, it would feel like you're working a little easier. Yeah, I don't like the sound right. of that. <laughs> I I got on the I got on my okay put it this way I got on my bike this morning and I do thirty five minutes of cardio I started taking it yesterday no word of a lie I burn in the same period of time without really thinking or looking fifty calories more in the same period of time I'm not sold I just take I'll take more genes. I'm so, okay I'm not I, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty skeptical about most things this I felt almost immediately like all right. I'll take a look. I, at I can work. I can work hard. I can work harder and not fatigue. A hundred percent. All I've got going on this week is I'm shaking a lot because I started climbing. Seems like a useful thing. You started. Oh, you started. Your <laughs> you started your cutting I start, stuff. I started my cutting stack. My uh, climbing <laughs> went in, and I'm and it's uh, making me rattle. I'm really fucking shaky. It's bad. It's bad. Every, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking come up with a shirt that says cutting stuff. <laughs> Mate, I reckon you should. I'm serious. You know how many people have commented? Just, just yes, I fucking know. <laughs> do I look leaner? The you kind look, of stuff you, working. You, you do look leaner. Your your arms look, 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 look a little way. hard. Look a little hard. <laughs> there's, there's a there's a vein. <laughs> I uh, I dropped fucking six pounds this week. Ooh, so I'm going to tell you guys something, and you guys tell me if it if it's stupid or not. But I, this Go has on. been my experience for 20 fucking years. So. Cool. I found that over all my years, the best diet is a balanced diet. <clears throat> and I know that sounds like really common sense, right? But people are like, oh, keto diet or just do protein and carbs. Don't do any fats. Yeah. You know, there's all these special things, right? Like yeah, 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 there's yeah. a lot of coaches. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of coaches now that do these like really, really high carb diets with no fat. And it's yeah. just pr protein and carbs. And so I'm like, you know what? So I talked to a friend of mine and he was like, I think you should try the protein and carb diet because it'll make your waist smaller. And I thought it was right. I'm like, you know what? Maybe the fats are hurting my digestion a little bit. And maybe mm -hmm. I'm not able to like get process my food properly. I, hear that. So I, cut, I took all the fats out of my diet, except for like a couple eggs. I have like, I have like three eggs and a couple meals. Yeah. And I noticed my workouts were good, but like every time I looked at my body, it would be like really full flat. one day and really flat another day. Like it was never, yeah. It never was like consistently holding a, a fullness. Yeah, I, I couldn't do like I couldn't. I would never look consistent. One day I was like, I look like shit. Mm. The next day I look really watery and full, and I'm like, I can't. Yeah. So I decided this week I changed my diet, and I, you know, I called John. I'm like, look, I need you to, I need you to stop being like on the sidelines. I need you to like actually take over. But I, yes. but I'm like, but I put this diet together. Take a look at it. Yeah. So I sent him the diet. What I did was reduce the carbs a little bit and increase the fats. So I'm doing like a 40, 30, 30. 40% protein, 30% carbs, 30% fat. Okay. And I lost fucking six pounds this week. My stomach looks smaller. My physique looks better. And my physique has been consistent all week long. Is that 40, 30, 30, like every meal? Yeah. 
cool. I don't do I don't do the because yeah, I know, some, no, I know some, you don't do like a nutrient timing like a yeah. yeah. Well, John John just said to me like when I sent him the diet, it was all pretty even, right? Yeah. And he goes, I want you to pull fifty grams of carbs from that. Yeah. So I was doing like two hundred grams of rice per meal. So all I did was reduce it to one per four meals. Yeah. So all, all I did was reduce them all to one fifty. Yeah. So I cut like fifty grams out of my diet. But yeah. the increase in fat is what's I, I add a tablespoon of olive oil to each meal now. Oh, I love olive oil with rice. So oh, nice. So good, right? It makes so, rice like ten times more. Yeah. So but it's like my body just came alive. Like I don't know and I don't know why I listen to anybody because I've always known that that was the formula for me because me and John have always done high fat diets. Well, Evan, Evan, like we say, Evan always likes a bit of olive oil in his fucking... Evan's um, a, a fat guy too, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he always adds a, a, a tablespoon to a meal for a yeah, meal. When yeah. I done a diet with Evan, he was pretty much along those lines still then as well. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just because I suppose there's just so many underlying benefits to the good monounsaturated fats that you get from such things as olive oil that we take we don't actually truly understand like well, in the book. I think there's mechanisms that happen yeah. that we don't understand. Well, just to, just to say, just to cover too, because I know someone's going to ask why olive oil. There is no reason. I just needed a fat source. And it tastes good. I, it tastes good. I didn't want to use coconut oil because it burns up too quick. Yeah. And I didn't want to do avocado because my stomach doesn't agree with it too, sometimes. And yeah. peanut, peanut butter also like fucks with my stomach too if I do too much of it. Yeah. So would you use coconut oil then in your off season potentially? I love coconut oil, uh, and I'll probably use it if we drop carbs more. I'll probably start using it like as an energy source. Yeah, because the yeah. coconut oil, in the way that it's it's used in the body, is very different, isn't it? It's almost like a it's almost energy immediately. Well, because it's a medium medium chain, right? So yeah, so it doesn't work the same as the olive oil would. The olive oil would certainly be something that's not a rapid. You know, you don't eat olive oil and then it's a readily available source of fat energy. Well, because I used to say, you know, the, I used to have the bro science terminology where I used to say, I don't feel like the coconut oil sticks. Yeah, it doesn't because it's, it's ready to go. Yeah, it doesn't make, the, it, doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like the meal sticks. It feels like yeah, it, dige yeah, yeah. it digests just as fast, right? Yeah, I hear that. So I, hear that. I feel like- As I was saying, in the off season, I'm just saying in the off season, you might use that if you're trying to push calories, right? Well, I talked to Patrick about that because I had the same thought process. I was like, you know what? I want to push the calories, but I don't want them to slow me down. So yeah. I'll do coconut oil. And I did that for like, honestly, for a really long time. But one of my favorite meals, chicken, rice, and then I would melt the, a tablespoon of coconut oil on top of hot rice and, then put, the, rice and then put the salt on top of that. So you had like the salty sweet. Nice. Oh, and then, and then Frank's red hot, of course, on top of that. And then I had like the perfect fucking meal and I ate that for years. Yeah. But then Patrick was like, no, it doesn't make sense. You should only use coconut oil when you need it as a source of energy. Like when your carbs are really low. Yeah. Which, yeah, I get it. I, see, I, I, that's what I mean. My brain works like his because I know that, for example, like a ketogenic diet, a coconut fat would be very appropriate because of its readily available energy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, like you say, so I, I kind of get that. But then again, like you say, I, I, if you're pairing it along meals for the calorie sake, I just don't know how it works. I know I just, I'm not going to go into it because I don't know the fucking science, but I just know it's very different than having other, other fats. Well, um, Ben, you could tell us a medium chain is going to be used a lot like for energy in the body rather than a long chain mm -hmm. fat, right? Yeah. But I mean, you're both on the right tracks. It's, it... I think, uh, I honestly think we're both right. I think what Patrick says is right. Like yeah. you do, you do want to use it for energy if your carbs are really low, but I agree with you, Ben, because. I don't I did, see that as a problem in the off season. Yeah. I did that for a really long time because it, the thing is it wouldn't slow. If I was eating 300 grams of rice yeah. and, I wanted, and I wanted to add calories, but I don't want it to slow me down. The coconut yeah. oil would add the calories without slowing my digestion uh, down. Exactly. Right? Yeah. It was you, if you add, add in, say, olive oil, and it did slow you down, now you're going to struggle to hit that calorie goal for the day. It, yeah. That's yeah. long term. That, if that's just one day, that's, those days are going to add up and get slower yeah. and slower and slower. The so. other thing is I don't cook with my oils either. So if anybody's listening and they want to try adding fats to their meals, I always add them. Awesome. Like to, I add them to the rice or whatever carb source. I add them afterwards so I get the full yeah. full bit of it. Yeah, because sometimes you can't, in... you can't really you can't really weigh it. Can't like you can't measure it because yeah, I got it burns a... up and you burn. oh, no, if, you're, mean, if you're, I, you're cooking, you, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Point. I uh, I just get a tablespoon of almond butter now and mix that into my rice, and it's it's fucking good. It that sounds good, but every time I do nut butters, I get fucking. It, it feels like it's too heavy on my stomach. Like I do one tablespoon. Really? Of, I do one tablespoon of peanut butter in the morning with my oatmeal. 
Yeah. And it's okay. But if I do it again for like consecutive yeah. meals, I feel like it just starts to sit in my gut. Yeah, I'm on no food right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I have I almond. Was, yeah, I, yeah. I have I have almond bar for my breakfast, and on my like low day, I have steak with eggs with oh. some almond butter on that. I actually put almond butter on that, and it's actually that sound, really nice. That sounds so good right now. Mm. It's really it's really good. A bit of salt and pepper on that. It's fucking awesome. I love steak and eggs. Is like the it's like the perfect meal, isn't it? Yeah, it never goes wrong, does it? Never goes wrong. Somebody asked if you could eat one bodybuilder. I think I can't remember if I if I actually took a picture of the question or not, but. Somebody asked if you could eat one bodybuilding meal for the rest of your life. What steak would and eggs. <laughs> I was just going to say, is steak, eggs, side of hash browns. Oh, yeah. I fucking, we, I need could the, eat. we need those hash browns here in England because we don't have them. It's really annoying. You guys don't have hash browns? No, not your ones. Our hash browns are something very different. What do they look like? They're like, uh, they're like a potato waffle like that. They're like oh, a waffle. It's like a... Your, it's yours a, are like shredded. Yours are like shredded. And I, I, know, like, I, know what you're, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, we have yeah. that too. We have that too. It's like a cake. They're still nice. do, yeah. yeah, they're still Look, nice. I'll tell you what. When I used to do my refeeds back in 2017, I'd do um, those potato waffles. I'd put a few in the toaster and then I'd put four poached eggs on top of them with some ketchup. That sounds good. Oh, that, that sounds, sounds good fucking too. good. Yeah. You know, I was, when I was coming up, when I was coming up, I was like, I think I was 27, 28. And Chad was coaching me. It was the first off season with Chad. He's like, okay, now we got to eat. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm down to eat, whatever. And he sends me the diet and it's all shit. Like the breakfast was like steak, eggs, farmer's sausage. And then he had a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of those potato waffles. He's like, I yeah. want you to have six of these every morning. And I'm like, look at this fucking breakfast, right? But it, like my whole diet was shit like that. And I'm like, anybody who says you have to eat like a little bit over maintenance, I don't want to get into that argument again, but go talk to Chad and ask him. <laughs> ask him well, what you know, a good example of this as well is like, say, Ben Sasan. Yeah. Like, Sass would eat in the off season, like, literally, like, really calorie dense Persian food. Because yeah. he's obviously a per Persian gentleman. Yeah. And, or uh, McDonald's. Or McDonald's as well. And then <laughs> when it comes to pre contest, he would just clean the food up and he'd lose the fat because the yeah. fucking difference in the food. Yeah. Wouldn't even have to kill himself. You can, I, I know I'm dieting now because every time you guys mention a food, I'm like, mm, dribbling. <laughs> I am as well. I can smell food now. I can fucking <laughs> smell <laughs> food now. <laughs> isn't it isn't it incredible what happened you know this is a really funny like thing i noticed early on in my career it's amazing how your taste buds can conform to your lifestyle yeah. like my like my brother for example he's a chef right so when he cooks he uses a lot of butter a lot of sauces a lot of a lot of salt and if you don't if he doesn't use all of that shit he's like this tastes like shit i can't taste anything but i'm like your yeah. fucking taste buds are so numb to like for the flavor of the actual sauce. food that you, but and then when I diet, I notice the smallest thing. Like if I go have an apple right now, I'm like, it's like the oh best man, apple. It's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So crisp, so fresh. <laughs> I noticed that here, like things have more artificial sweet in them. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, like the cakes or something like that. I'm like, it just doesn't, to me, I think English bakery is got it locked up. Right. Yeah, well, and then German, German like, bakery, German bakery. Okay, but okay, but in terms of like, it's just, it's just it's not US, US it's not US bakery areas. <laughs> okay, okay, but like the American, like even the bread is sweet here. Yeah, yeah. All right, and I'm like, why is the bread sweet? It's it's like yeah. an artificial. I can say for sure, I've traveled a lot, and the food in Europe is hands down mm. better. It just it's very decent. It's just better. It's just better than here. I, I feel like that the quality is better. Um, but yeah, I was actually going to, the story, the, the original, the first time I ever noticed that with my taste buds was peanut butter. When I, when I used to eat peanut butter, I used to eat the regular craft or Jiffy, you know, the regular shit yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like yeah, yeah. full of icing sugar. Yeah. Yeah. And then I forget what coach I have, but they're like, get natural peanut butter. So the first yeah. time I got it, I'm like, what is this shit? You have to mix it. And it's all like fucking, so I mix it. Yeah, and then yeah. I, and then I eat it and I'm like, it just tastes like fucking peanuts. This is gross. I'm like, this is disgusting. Ah. <laughs> right? After a while. So I, I start eating because it was in my diet. So I force myself. I eat it, whatever. I can't remember how long it was. It was like six months later or something like that. I was at breakfast. You know, they give you those little packets of peanut butter. Smackers, smuckers or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I took one out and I put it on some bread because I, and then I, and I'm like, ah. this, all I can taste is sugar. Yeah. It's like my, my taste buds had changed so much yeah. that I couldn't yeah. taste like, Sugar blunts your taste buds. So the longer you eat sugar-enriched foods, the lo less taste you have. Yeah. So that's why, because you had that absence from the sugar, yep. your taste buds start to be like revitalized again. You can actually taste food for what it is. 
Well, that's good. That goes back to us dieting now. And if like, if I, if somebody gave me a watermelon right now, I'd be in heaven. See, I would like right now, I'd like a, um, a, like a ciabatta bread with olive oil on. Yeah. I'm having a lot of olive oil. So I'm okay. You can have that. Okay. I want to, I want to, you know, you know what I've tomato sauce, anything with tomato, like pizza or pasta. Yeah. Lasagna, something like that. My, my wife's bison burgers that she's making, uh, the, the like crack to me. So like really? fucking crack cocaine. It's like this, yeah, like really nice artisan bun bread. Yeah. And then it's like a bison burger. You just literally get the meat, squish it, fry it off, right? There's nothing in it. And then yeah. it's a, a grilled pineapple with a fried egg on top. Grilled and then bread. I do, yeah, and then I do, a, I do a little shimmy of mayonnaise and ketchup. Boom. Oh, I used to do, Hani used to have me do the pineapple because he was like, you know, the enzymes and the digestion or whatever. So oh, yeah. we used to, I used to cut up pineapple and I'd saute it in a frying pan with my chicken. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Fucking delicious. Yeah. Yeah. It's so good. Anyway, somebody asked a question. <laughs> if you had to get rid of pizza, burgers, or wings, which one would you get rid of? Pizza. Uh, pizza? Fuck yeah, that. I'm not big on, I'm not a huge pizza guy. Every really? time I eat it, every time I eat it, I go, but like the idea of it seems nicer to me than the reality of it. When I eat it, I'm like, actually, I wasn't that. Convinced. Is it because you're Asian? Probably, yeah. I, yeah. I, I like things with bones in them, like some dog, <laughs> some dog See, meat, some dog meat. Yeah, <laughs> fresh off the street. <laughs> what about what about you, James? I'll get rid of the wings because they're the only one that's a single ingredient. Like in a sense that it's just chicken on a bone. I know they can be really nice, but pizza you can have a variety of flavors. And a burger oh, can as well. That's a good well. point. That's a good I'm point. Trying to be smart here. Trying to play yeah, it smart. But, but you can get like a variety of wing sauces. You can have like barbecue. Yeah, but that's, I know. But still, I it's still what, just chicken, yeah. Yeah, and you like, got the like, blue like, chicken. Like you got the that. burger there. The burger, you can have a fucking egg in it and a bit of fucking pineapple. He's right. If you have a burger, you get the bun. So you get some carbs and you get a the egg. Lettuce, nice you fresh put, tomato. Yeah, you can put some avocado in there. Exactly you can right. use different meats. You got lamb, bison, beef. You can, and you can use cheese. Caramelized onion. Bacon, oh, caramel, caramel, oh. caramelized onions—a good one. Can you tell oh. we're not? We've been talking about food for like twenty minutes. That's <laughs> <laughs> only, only ask, only ask questions that are food related. Just food related questions, all podcast. Oh, it's fun. It's fun. It's nice. It's good. <laughs> uh, okay, let's get to some of these, just because there's a bunch. So, um, do you believe it's more beneficial to keep generally the same exercises in a routine so you can progressively overload over time, or switch exercises weekly? Or keep the compounds generally the same for extended period and mix up the finisher exercises. So there's three scenarios uh, there. I'm, I'm a generally keep the movement. Path. Once you've designed a session that covers all the movement paths that you need. So if you're training back, you have your lat, you know, kind of focused movement. You have your kind of upper back. You have your lower back movement. Once you've got them in place, then you can exchange the movements. But just for as long as something follows the same path. I don't mind changing exercise as long as it does the same fucking thing. Wait a minute, though. That's my, that's my uh, give, me, give me a specific example. So let's say you're training legs, and yep. you do leg extensions, leg press, squats, and then you finish with lunges, right? Let's say you yeah. pick those four exercises. Yeah. Yep. How uh, Do you do those again next week? Do you rearrange the order, or do you change them all together? I would do the, sa I would do the same order. I'll do the same order, but I might say instead of like, so what exercise do you do? Extension? Extension, leg press, squats, lunges. So instead of squat the next week, I might do like a V squat or a hack squat. So you, um, might, you might change one, yeah, but yeah, it's same, yeah. same movement pattern. Same, same principle. Okay. I got you. Yeah. What about, yeah, that's what about how you, I it. Yeah, pretty much 100 the same. Um, yeah. I think too many people are looking to change too often to allow the body to adapt. Um, that's one thing I see a lot. Like, oh, you're not changing my plan this week. I'm like, no, unless you, have an, unless you have an injury or a glaring weakness or something we need to really prioritize then no until you've mastered something and it takes years to master that you can carry on developing and progressing off of a, 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 a solid movement we used to do something along the lines of like james would one week we might rack pull, another week we deadlift or one week we might front squat then we'd back squat the same movement yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 and we'd rotate between those two um typically and, and so like one week we'd t-bar row the next week we would barbell row but we'd only alternate between those two variations yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd kind of like an almost like an a week and a b week and then we yeah, just, yeah 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 that's so as I, far as my variation would go so i i kind of agree with both of you guys but i kind of have a bit of the third scenario as well i like to change the last movement 
So like usually when I'm doing a, a workout, I have like the first three movements or four movements are my bread and butter. They're always there. I might yeah. rearrange the order or rearrange like maybe like I said, the movement pattern would be the same, but it might be different kind of exercise. Yeah, 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 yeah. But really the only thing that really changes is the last exercise. I might do something different to finish the workout. Yeah. But, but yeah. Like, for the most what is, what, what, what's that is that for your own satisfaction is it for what's it for what's yeah your... yeah i think it's just a little bit yeah. just to get a different feel i don't think it's, yeah. it's doing anything dramatically different i just yeah it's just to keep it interesting like if i'm doing legs i'll do like uh leg extension like we said leg extension leg press squat and at the end yeah. is sometimes i'll do walking lunges or i'll do like sissy squats or yeah. i'll do like bulgarian split squats like it would be always be something a little different right? so you like more more like your finisher slash pump movement right yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 we do that we like every now and then throw in a different bicep movement or whatever it might be. but i think yeah. the bread i think the bread and butter movements for me are always there you know you're always going to catch me doing a t-bar or a squat or like a you know a military press like those are always going to be yeah there. yeah i agree um the one person that did say something to me about this that i thought was uh, interesting was uh, chris tuttle Chris Tuttle uses a, used a training pro system that was like the exact same workout, exact same movement, exact same reps and sets, but only for six weeks at a time. I think it was four or six weeks at a time. Yeah, yeah. And then he would change it all. And he said, he said, I'd have to get him on to explain it properly, but he said something yeah. about like after six weeks, that's when the body's kind of, it's available to change. You've kind of maxed out that progressive overload mm -hmm. on those movements. And you He's a very... Movement. Chris is a very intelligent, researched guy. So whatever he would have said would have had merit. I wish I wish I could remember exactly the way he put it, yeah. but it, it made a lot of sense to me that. But he but he kept everything exact for those. Yeah. Four well, Dorian, six. Dorian, uh, Dorian almost did. I think Dorian was very, but maybe for too long, hence the injuries. But uh, he was kind of the same movements over and over again. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Do you right. think? Do you think if it fits your macros works, like if you eat, for instance, 3,000 calories of clean food versus junk food, would it make a difference? I don't think that's really if it fits your macros. Uh, it's not, it, is it? It's not. No. If it fits your macros, it still follows a... Uh, you won't be able to eat junk if you fit, if you do, if you fit, because it would be right. out of your macros. It would be out of them. You, the food, the fat content and the carbohydrate content would exceed your diet. So I think what Joe here is saying is he thinks a calorie is a calorie, which is one argument. But if it fits, if it fits your macros, is based on a set amount yeah. of macros for your protein, yeah. a set amount of macros for your carbs, and a set amount of macros for your fats. So you can't just eat whatever you want. You still have to, no. follow, you still have to follow those guidelines. Yeah, this is the same as the Patrick Moore question last week, wasn't it? Which is that really? Which oh, is that like, he could eat. Yeah. Can you eat bread? Can you eat white, refined white bread and still achieve the same thing? I mean, I what do you, what I, do you, what do you guys think? If you had three thousand calories of like you know chicken and rice versus 3,000 calories of if it fits your macros so where, where you could change out some of the foods, it's probably going to be fine, right? Yeah, but I just, do you know what? The thing is, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a conundrum because you could probably only replace maybe one thing a day out of six meals to still be within your macronutrient uh, requirements because, because it is if it fits your macros. If it was yeah, a man, some, calor calories, it could be totally different. I, some some you know of I mean? these guys, are, some of these guys are really fucking crafty with the if it fits your macros, and they get. Well, I know, get this, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I bet they will. <laughs> can I can I just say this? I actually practice if it fits your macros to a certain extent. Like I have like the seven or eight foods that I eat, right? Yeah, if yeah, I, yeah. If I don't want to eat chicken, I'm, interchangeable. Yeah, I'm gonna eat fish, right? Like yeah. it's not. I don't think my but, body's gonna be worse if I eat fish instead of chicken. But that's what they don't do. They're not doing it. If you, they're thinking of it, if it's macros in a way that it will allow them to be less stringent on, uh, less, um, yeah, tight with their diet. But I don't think a that's a mistake. It's a I mistake. Don't think, I don't think you, you, I don't think you really can. Cause if you do it the you way can't. it's supposed to be done, you need to get a gram and a half a pound per, a gram and a half per pound of protein, two grams blah, blah, of carbs blah. and 0.35 or something like that grams of fat. But this, I mean, that they, some of them are doing it. They'll, they'll use like cheese in their diet, but then they'll account for the protein content in that cheese and the, and then they'll adjust the other foods with it. Yeah. I mean, and then if, it's if a lot of work, if we say that, then I say, I believe personally, and like I said, this could be a bro science thing, but the quality of food that you're eating is going to determine how fast and slow you build muscle. So Absolutely. like the, the protein from cheese is not going to be as good as the protein from, steak or chicken is that no because there's amino acid profiles so if their profiles aren't as good also like with carbohydrate source if they have more of an effect on insulin than others then you'll get these constant spikes in insulin daily that's going to cause a different physique than one that's more steady 
It well, will, yeah, because I, over I, over time, those peaks frequently, your pancreas going like that, yeah. it's going to lead to a different looking physique than someone who's in control. Of their blood There's no doubt about it. Well, Ben, I also want to ask you this. If you're doing cheese, what about all the fat content? How do they manage to work that into their fucking macros? They'll have loads because of carbs. They, no, because if they... No, because they, 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 they have to have a certain amount of carbs. Like, how would you work it no, in? No, I'm saying that... that accounting... You cut out, Ben. Right? You cut out. Say that again. Hey, you got me? I got okay, you. So yeah, I'm yeah. saying they use it... This, so if it's chicken, rice, olive oil, if that's the prescribed meal, well, they'll just change it to a little bit less chicken, and like no cheese. olive oil, no olive oil, so now, and then they'll add cheese to it instead. So now they've got the fat matches what the olive oil would have, and they've got some protein from the cheese, but they've reduced how much chicken they've had. So the meal numbers are identical. Yeah. The but I thing, don't think it's the same meal. I don't know if that's a problem if you're the average person. I think at our level, or if you're a, if you're any, if you're a competitor at all, I think you want to reduce as many variables as possible. Yeah, I think, I, don't get me wrong, if you're just trying to live a good lifestyle and enjoy your training and eat a variety of foods, you yeah. can do, if, if it's your macros, and have a really good physique. Yeah. But it's like you say, when you're getting into that upper echelon of bodybuilding and you're trying to be the best, that's when it matters. Yeah. But even if you're not, right, say you're an average Joe and you stall and you're doing if it fits your macros, try not then doing if it fits your macros. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 totally, yeah. totally. Because I, I bet your body will start responding better now. I got a good one for you guys. Would you rather make mediocre gains and be able to listen to your favorite music or make great gains but have to listen to Justin Bieber all the time? I don't care about I, what music. I don't mind Justin Bieber, so crack, crack Justin on. I don't mind him. He's all right. <laughs> I, don't, I don't mind Justin. I'm the opposite of you guys. Fuck that. I'm like, I can't. My music means too much to me. I can't. I can't live without music. I'm not paying really? music emotionally. Yeah. No. Really? I have no, I have no emotion to music, really. None? Yes, you Not do. Really. You're always posting shit with like rap lyrics and shit. Yeah, but it doesn't mean I fucking love it and need it. Well, that means it's evoking some type of emotion. No, it just means I think that that particular song is all right. <laughs> nah, I've I've seen I can, post I've seen I, post actual look, lyrics. Look, look when I train. Look, look when I train. Look when I train. Do I have yeah. any music playing? Have I got any headphones on? No. But no, you got music I'm, on. You got music on. Yes, you do. I heard because uh, it's just it's just the gym music plan. It's not that like I'm Yeah, no, I'll just you... fucking get. I get under a bar regardless. Hmm. You get really? no music on. Yeah, man. I don't. I, can, I, I can train really fucking hard in silence. Okay, Thanks. I'm not. That's a different question. I can train without music. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, I love music, and I couldn't be like. Imagine listening to Justin Bieber all the fucking time. He's got some good songs. They're pretty catchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it for the fucking gains, man. If you really want to be the best, you got to listen to Justin Bieber. It's fine. So if they said yeah, to you, Justin in. James, you could be Mr. It's Olympia, worth. but you have to listen to Justin Bieber every day. I'll have Justin Bieber beside me singing in my fucking ear roll. If I have to. <laughs> I'll have the real Justin Bieber by my side and I'll even feed him. <laughs> All right. It's no okay. problem. We've, we've made that one clear, I think. So Justin, if you watch this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your thoughts on fasting? I know John Meadows likes a 24-hour fast for resetting insulin sensitivity, etc. What do you think, Ben? We'll go to you since you're the coach. Fasting is healthy, but it's not optimal for bodybuilding. Okay, I agree with that. I think there's other ways to reset insulin sensitivity. Like you can just lower your carbs and reset insulin sensitivity, no? You could boost cardio. You can... Look into Stay supplementation harder. with berberine or yeah, there's a bunch of different ways. You don't have to starve yeah. yourself. I think John John uses fasting to reset gut bacteria. Yeah. I think that that's a different that's a different thing. There, I I agree with there you are, there. Yeah, I like say if you have a, a health if there's something going on you need to reset, it can be healthy, it can be a good option. I've done fast. In fact, for a couple of years when Luke and I used to travel when we go to shows, I would fast because I would I didn't want to take a meals on the plane I couldn't be bothered and I didn't want to pay for airport food because it's about four times too expensive yeah. so I literally used to fast because I'd get off the plane and I wouldn't have any I wouldn't have any like, bad water retention I'd feel pretty good I'd get there have a good meal and I'd be pretty good right this is when I wasn't trying to push my weight I was trying to hold my weight at maintenance right yeah yeah so but I wasn't trying to be an optimal bodybuilder at that point yeah, yeah. if I'm trying to be an optimal bodybuilder if you're trying to maximize 
how much muscle tissue you have and everything else that goes with that fasting is not yeah. the right option have you ever binged on a plane yeah yeah i'm pretty much on the on the way home from every show with luke because <laughs> <laughs> you know because uh, the annoying thing was the annoying thing was we'd fly a couple of times and we'd fly business class right so we'd be in the lounge and we'd be like well this is shit so luke would be having like a, he'd go he'd go be like yeah but we get free diet cokes so you go and like get all the diet coke, sit down in the lounge, yeah. and then we'd get up onto the um, into the airplane. They've got like the, the the bar where you can go and help yourself, and they bring you a menu. And nice. it's like, no thank you, no thank you. And I would always go, no thank you, because he was dieting, and I'm like, yeah. well, I'm not going to be a fucking pig next to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then on the way home, we'd fly home for them. We'd be like, Fuck no holds yeah. barred. Yeah, we'd be like, go, go, go on there with empty Tupperware, so we could fucking yeah. load it in. Love Dude, it. that's how I was, man. So bad. I would go to the duty free, and I would get that like, there's like a big bag of Tolberone, like this big. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I would, and I remember sitting there. This woman was like, I had an empty seat next to me. And this woman's over, and I got the bag right here, right. And I'm watching movies, and I literally unwrapped every fucking little Tolberone, uh, and just the whole. And she's oh, like, no, I thought you meant the big fucking stick of to- you know the big one. The no, I got that. No, I got the big family size oh. bag with all the little ones. And is I would it the little ones. Is it the little ones that were the different ones? They're little but different. There was like white chocolate, yeah, yeah. dark yeah, chocolate, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and then regular. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And I would just but, fucking sit there for like, you know, six hour flight from fucking, you know, wherever Germany back home, and I would just oh, it's great. It was, but it's horrible because then you got to <laughs> shit your pants, and you can't shit on that fucking plane because the bathroom's like. Have you ever shit on a plane? Loads of times, yeah. every time. Always <laughs> shit. <laughs> I shit multiple times on a plane. <laughs> I love it. Why wouldn't there. you? If you've got to go, what are you going to do? Just hold it, plug it up. I can't How? shit on a plane, dude. Think about hey. it. I There's so much pressure. There's like, I know there's people waiting to come in, number Fuck one. Em. And I know the, fr- secondly, yeah, was- secondly, if I sit down, I can't even fucking wipe my ass because it's a fucking cubicle. It's tight, I was like, yeah, it's and then I'm like, everyone, these people are going to hear me. There's people like, no. watching, there's people watching no, that- the movie like right there. Oh, okay, that no, that that noise. Uh, you can pretty much let rip on an airplane. No one's hearing no, you. Right? Me, that, that ambient noise is like it's loud. <laughs> no one's hearing that. They'll smell it. They're not hearing it. <laughs> pooing on a pooing on a plane is quite therapeutic. It's a bit different. I can't do it. It's disgusting, man. There's no water. No, in the, there's no wa- there's no water in the toilet. No, but you can stand up and look at it and press the button and it goes out of the hole. It gets vacuumed out. The, wait, it's wait. Fun. The water. The water's a fucking blessing in disguise because you don't want splashback off a public fucking. No, toilet. the water is a blessing in disguise because it covers. Have you ever shit? And man, when you shit, on, there's no on. water. It smells like ten times worse. You should come yeah, to Norway. Why? 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 Because we go to the cabin and there's a, and we have to shit in a shed. <laughs> Like literally, you have to go outside. The shed, a, the shed, the shed shits in a the shed. The shed shits in the shed. We go outside. <laughs> literally, we go outside and we sit in a fucking dual toilet where there's two seats for two people, with just hole in what? a wooden cabin and a polystyrene seat with a polystyrene lid. You just open it and there's two piles of shit underneath it, and you just pull, you pull on top of the previous poo and then Why? Wait a minute. Why? Is and you have to pour you have to pour potpourri on it. Wait a minute. Why is smell. there t- why is there two holes? Do you sit next to somebody? Yeah, you can have a conversation with a friend, a family friend. You're fucking joking. No? No, there's a little barrier, right? There's like a... No, 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 no barrier. Oh, so, okay. like I can sit, so I can sit here yeah, and shit, and you're like right, you're right yes. there shitting. And we, and we can discuss whatever we were discussing prior to the shit. <laughs> Carry our so conversation me, off. So me and you're inside having a coffee, and you're like, yeah, yeah this, coffee's making, the this coffee's making me want to shit. And you're like, me too. And we just go take a shit together? Exactly, and conversation doesn't have to stop. And then you come you back and ask them. The, when you're there next and you do the podcast, I want you and Yannick out yeah. in the, in the, the I will, um, But the, I have. I've, I've, sh- I've shat in there next to her pissing. No, times. no. Oh, I couldn't yeah. do that. I couldn't I do that. Get, mate, listen, it's about, it's, you know, it's the experience. you got to do it. Do it properly. <laughs> Promise you. If, you. if you're out there, you can't do fucking do it half assed. All right, so There's certain experiences I can live without. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if I... yeah, I don't need to know I'm, how that feels. Yeah, you, I'm inviting you to for, to Norway to the cabin. So <laughs> let me know when. I'm not shitting with you. I'll go, but I'm not shitting with you. Not in off, well, not in off season. I'm not shitting next to James in off season. <laughs> all right, well, I'll let you. I, I, you can't shit at me, but you two can shit with each other because you're close. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> all right, listen. You get one. One. You get to pick one sauce. Uh, to keep forever. 
Oh, it says one sauce that you would give up. That's easier. I thought he meant you have to pick one sauce. I think we should say pick one because that's yeah. a better question. He fucked yeah. up. Yeah, he fucked up. <laughs> um, okay, you get to pick one sauce for the rest of your life to use as condiment for your food. What would it be? I'm in two Man minds is. right now because I'm, I'm, I'm desperate for a steak. And if I was to have a sauce with a steak, it would be peppercorn. <laughs> You put sauce on this? I don't use sauce on this. Yeah, like proper peppercorns. Uh, like I don't, I don't when I'm dieting, but like, over, do you not have peppercorns? No, no, no. Sauce? I mean, like normally, like if I go to a nice steakhouse, I don't, I don't put anything on my steak. Oh, I do. I put a bit of peppercorn sauce on. Yeah, it. yeah. yeah. I'd go mayo. I can put mayo on everything. Really, mayo of all things? Mayo, I can put it on a burger. I can put it on steak. I can put it on chicken. I can put that yeah, shit but, on anything. Yeah, but ketchup. Are you, are you a squirt mayo or a spoon mayo out of glass jar? I, like I prefer the Hellman's jar. I like Glass a, Hellman's like, jar. And, so you're a I squeeze like guy. Squirt, yeah, I want to squirt it. Yeah, uh, he's American. Everything is convenient, right? Yeah, squirt. Even the fucking jam. Like, like jelly. The fu- yeah, you know I was about like, to say the squirty fucking jam. I'm like, we get, don't have that. We have jars, but you have to put a knife. Get in me the, get me the bon 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 with the fucking, you know, the uh, white and red lid. Yeah, I know. The, the, yeah, the, yeah. Like, the artisan right. jam. Okay, That's wait a minute. So way. you're saying you're saying mayo, James. You're saying yeah. what? Peppercorn sauce. That's really that. I thought you guys were gonna go with like something common, like ketchup, or. We we'll leave like, that for you, huh? That's for you. That's for you. We'll leave the common shit for you. Well, I don't know. More if cultured. I, <laughs> I don't know yeah, if I'd go cultured. ketchup or Frank's Red Hot. It's Frank's for you. It's Frank's. It'd be wrong to say otherwise. Yeah, because I don't want to put ketchup. Well, because I don't want to put ketchup on my chicken. You want to put mayo on your chicken? Yeah, hundred percent. A chicken mayo sandwich. Oh my god, are you fucking yeah, chicken? In a, in a, sa- in a yeah, sandwich. Yeah. In a sandwich, yes, but not like. Chick- in my off season, I do chips, which are French fries, <laughs> and I do chicken and French fries with mayo, and it's fucking awesome. Is that your American accent? <laughs> yeah, French fries. now. French fries. French fries. French fries. <laughs> ah, French fries. Uh, we've talked about food a lot. Is this as we diet? Is it going to get worse? I think it's <laughs> yes. going to get worse. <laughs> Into the uh, best way to recover from leg doms. I'm struggling with this during my push pull leg split. Bicycle after training for 10 That's... minutes and then make sure you've drunk enough water or had some electrolytes and stretch off the training also. <laughs> that's yes. my go to. No, that's, that's, I agree with that 100%. And if I'm going to add my two cents, it's uh, I'll, my cardio in the morning has been helping dramatically. Does. Yeah, it does. I get, I get like my legs recover faster because I like they'll be sore the next day when I got on the bike, and maybe yeah. sore the day after that, and then I'm good. Yeah. What do you think, Ben? Does. Any, any remedies? Mm. Magnesium oil. Uh no, get, just getting blood, getting blood moving through into the bike is always a good yeah. idea. I'm, I'm with you. Um, or just if you're, if you're really not recovering, maybe you need to look at your your rate of recovery and why that, why you're recovering slower. If you're doing a push pull legs, maybe you're, yeah. you're not recovering quicker. Mm. No, that's a good point. Maybe your, your diet could be shit too. I mean, we're, I think me and James are saying that shit about the bike, but we're assuming that everything else is good. Like your diet's good. Your sleep is yeah. good. Your yeah. supplementation is good. Yeah. yeah. Ben's right. Your first thing you actually should look at is probably your diet. It's true. And maybe so make true. sure you're eating enough. Um, like, 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 like we said, what was it last week? The anabolic window is every day, all day, every day. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, clock, have you ever felt confident in dress clothes or does it just feel like you're wearing a tablecloth? <clears throat> I just feel restricted in them. Hmm. Yeah. I think it depends. Like what, a, I think it depends what dress clothes you're talking about. If you're, if you're talking about like a suit with a dress shirt and a tie, then yeah, I don't, I mean, unless you get it tailored, it's like, I don't think it's... But, uh, but even then, you look shitty, right? Yeah, I don't like feel when like... I was, yeah. Before bodybuilding, when I was like, what, 180, 190 pounds, or like on my way up, I could wear clothes and they were fashionable. Now I'm like, fuck that, it's no point. If they yeah, just yeah. Look, I, like no, a, I like a doorman. But I, but I don't think... I think there are clothes you can wear. Like, I wear a lot of long sleeve stuff that's like... Yeah. Not, not fitted, but a little bit tighter, but kind of loose. Snug, loosened. snug. Yeah, and it's yeah like, but I think I think every every single piece of clothing that you've ever worn would look better on you if you were a hundred pounds lighter. I agree with that statement. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to look good in, in nice clothes. I, I'll give you that. But there are th- certain things that accentuate, like don't make us look horrible. And there are things. Yeah, of course. You shouldn't wear. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just calling Bianca quickly, s- chaps. So if I, I'm just going to say something out loud. So I'm not trying to disturb anyone. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Bianca, you okay to sort me? Thank you. Oh. 
Sorry, she's getting her feet out. Um, no, no, it's she's, like... uh, she's sorting out my food actually, my post workout. No, uh, all I come, all that springs to mind is you remember when Ronnie, like a post show, would be in these big suit, too big, yeah. still, like, and it was horribly tailored. It was just, it was like this, it was like a fucking tent. Yeah, Jay, Jay, used to, Jay used to look like that too. Jay yeah. would have his, Jay would have his tailored suits, and even though they look good, he just was too big. He was just like, yeah. but Steve, you know what? Steve Kuklo gets away with it. Steve Kuklo's fucking been wearing some suits and shit lately to different events, and he looks good. He's got a good, he's got a good tailor. I think it's because Kuklo's big, but he's also like taller, so I think it, yeah, yeah, the height as well. It looks well, it looks good on him. Yeah. Um, we're gonna go a little faster because James is yawning and I'm starving. The only reason I'm yawning is because literally I did come fresh on here off the back of a fucking workout. Okay. Oh, wait, hang on. I didn't realize we were getting pre-podcast pumps in. I would have fucking done some push-ups. Um, <laughs> well, siren. Uh, should I? take my rest days if I feel like I can keep training. This guy's basically, he's got a long question. I rephrased it, but basically he's saying, if I feel good, if my nutrition's on point and it's a rest day, should I force it or can I go train? My, my opinion is you should force it because for the longest time, I felt like, oh, I'm good. I could go train, but then I would just be tired the fucking next day. Yeah, this is it, true. Oh, so, you're saying, so you're saying you're saying not force it. You're saying stick to the rest. You're forced, of it, right? forced, not going. Forced I'm saying going. I'm saying force yourself to stick to your plan, which is take yeah. the day off. Oh, okay, fine. I've you meant like force it as in go to the gym and no, force yourself. No, no, no. Okay, fine, no. fine, fine, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. No, I don't. I don't I, think... I, I... Go ahead, James. No, I agree because it just throws you out of sync as well. Like if you've got a plan, and then you just start fucking playing around with a plan, where does it end? Yeah. You know, I well, feel I like it's think... just a, it's a good lesson to just stick to a plan even if you do feel fresh if you feel fresh be fucking happy you do and take it with it you know go well, with it you're, like, only gonna feel, you're only gonna feel that much better the next day too exactly you're gonna be really ready to train then yeah so I, I think like if you yeah. train monday tuesday wednesday say right yeah and then you, and then you take thursday off and you decide you know what today's thursday i feel great i'm gonna go to the gym it's fine but maybe then you're burnt out for friday now you fuck the rest of your week yeah because the days won't they won't flow how they should have now yeah. and i agree i agree i hate those, that. I fucking hate those, that. Those, I think rest is one of the most under, especially in young up and coming, one of the most underrated things is rest and recovery. They think that the more I go and train, the bigger and better I'll be. It's not true. The more you, the more you rest and the more you optimize your recovery and rest from a good training session, the bigger and better you'll be. Well, because the, the two go hand in hand, right, Ben? It's like the more yeah. the more rested you are, the harder you're going to fucking train. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, okay. So true. People take that for granted. People underestimate the importance of the days off, man. I did as well. I'm like you. I said, yeah. you know, back in the day, I'd do six days in a row. I'd be like, nah, I feel fine. That's what I did but for like for like two years. Get, yeah. No. The thing is, you, what I notice is you just don't get any fucking bigger. Nope. Because when <laughs> you back off, when you when you back down to three and four, and then you see how much you grow in the, during those periods, yeah. it makes you realize, oh shit, I yeah. was. I was well, doing this shit. If anybody wants to take a little bit of cautionary tale from me, that's when I think most of my injuries happen. Yeah. I was training, I was training six days a week, and I think it's not my fault. It's not it's not John's fault, it's my fault because John would work in four heavy days yeah. and and two like pump days or like lighter days. Yeah. And my and my lighter days always just turned into another workout. Yeah, yeah, so because yeah. you can't go half ass. You're not one of no, guys. No, so I would yeah. go six days straight and then I start getting injured and injured and injured, and I just broke my body down. Yeah. So I think and like James said, I didn't get any better those years. I actually like think I got worse. Yeah, so, I did it. I did it. I, I regressed heavily because I was in the gym too much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, put these in order of importance. Sleep, training, diet, drugs, supplements. I don't Wrong. think there is an order. I think they all well, have to be. I think they all have to be there. I think it's all, I it's all a puzzle, right? But certain pieces are bigger than others. Yeah. I think training and diet are your two <sighs> biggest. Are they? Things. Are they bigger? Are they bigger? Yeah, because really? I, cool. I think because I think yeah. you can. Okay, for example, supplements to me would be last. And I should okay. say this yeah, yeah, you... yeah, so let's let's subtract. Right. Them, let's, so let's look at what we got. Yeah. If you took away any of those things, would it fall apart? So would the what's... machine fall apart if you took away supplements? No. No. Wouldn't fall apart. No. Would the would the machine fall apart if you took away sleep? I think it would. Yes. Yeah. If you took away training, there is but, no fucking but, machine. But wait a minute, but wait a minute. It's, it's, but, it's <laughs> right. not black, but it's not black and white, right? Because no. optimal sleep is like, you know, six to eight hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. I could probably sleep four hours a day. Like Ronnie, Ronnie's notorious for having like no Stays sleep. Stays up well late. 
what's yeah, ESPN? Yeah, stays, stays up late, doesn't, but doesn't sleep in, so he's getting no sleep, and he's still the greatest bodybuilder ever. That could be genetic. What, but, but I'm also saying, like, you could probably get away with, like, a little bit of sleep and still be good. Yeah, that's why I think training and diet are the first two. Then yeah. sleep comes underneath that. Then I would have drugs, then supplements. I have, I have, yeah. I have diet, training, drugs, sleep, supplements. Drugs more than sleep. Yes. Okay, but put it this way: that, that's if, a, you, if you, if you, you all right, but like James was doing, take one, take them, take each category out completely not just a little yeah, bit I know. so I, no I, supplements you can still train and grow right no drugs you can still there are no. good natural body there are good natural bodybuilders out there don't say they're not i'm saying like no, a, no, a, i'm no. saying our, i'm saying our level i'm saying like me like no no, 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 no. Level. okay all right so take sleep out entirely so you never sleep never fucking sleep at all ever yeah, yeah. not even four yeah. hours no, but it has to be total. Nothing it's at all. Definite. <laughs> no, because you were saying drugs. Oh, okay. no, I, I, well, what about yeah. a little bit of drugs then? I oh, it's just a little bit. I could be. I, I don't think. Okay, I don't think me or James would be where we are with a little bit of drugs. I don't think you'd be half right. as anywhere near you are if you never slept ever. I said a little bit of sleep. Never sleep. I didn't yeah. say that. <laughs> okay. Okay. What would you? What would you look better if you took? No drugs at all, or never fucking slept ever. Okay, nobody said never sleep. We're talking. I'm about- asking the question. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, you have to. I like, I, I like, I like this question. I like this. I think this is fun. I think that <laughs> the importance of drugs outweighs, outweighs, outweighs the importance of sleep. Who needs sleep anyway? Oh, okay. All right. So in that case, so in that case, so in that case, you have to choose one of them only. Wait a minute. That does not mean zero of each. It means, <laughs> it means if I get four hours of sleep, right, that's not optimal, but I could still become a pro bodybuilder on four hours of sleep. But if you said to me, you're only allowed to use 500 milligrams of test, I don't know if I get as big as I need to be. Okay. Uh, Lee Priest turned pro is natural, right? Okay. You're, we're not talking about outliers. We're talking about the general popular, like, uh, the overall, like, scope of people we're not talking about ronnie coleman we're not talking about if Lee i Priest. took you if if i kept you up all night i'm like nah, 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 do <laughs> is that really your ear i, <laughs> oh, you, I already said the worst bodybuilder ever. <laughs> i already said four hours of sleep which is actually what i got for a really long time because trend would always fuck my sleep all right, all right, all right. what about this four hours of sleep and a thousand milligrams of test or all the sleep in the world i didn't hear the end of that you cut out and what yeah for all the sleep in the world plus what I think he cut out. Fuck. Now I want to know what he said. <laughs> James, come back. There you go. Are you back? back? Are you back? Can you hear us? I got him. I can see him. I can see him. I can't hear him. Fucking James. Anyway, I'm going with the second option. All the sleep in the world and like a TRT dose of drugs. That's not going to get you to the Olympia stage. I'm, is this guy asking to get to the Olympia? What was the original question? Because apparently I'm not apparently I'm not allowed to rework the question. So why are you? Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna read it. Ex- I'm gonna read it exactly. Okay. Okay. All it says is, put these in order of importance: sleep, training, diet, drugs, supplements. We all agree mm-hmm. that supplements are kind of like an yeah. a, lu- a luxury item. You can you you yeah. can use them. They're gonna help you, but they're not absolutely necessary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we all agree that. Diet and training are one and two. I think diets first. Are we are we in agreement? Diets first. I think training's first. Yeah, I guess you could still get huge if you had a shit diet, but you 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 couldn't get huge if you trained like shit. Mm. That's what I mean. So I do I do think I think you, I would I would feel that I could progress more. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I do I do think training's first. I don't. I'm not even going to explain why it's kind of self explanatory but not really, because if you didn't eat, there's a whole bunch of gym bros I know that train really fucking hard, but can't get their diet right, so they look like shit. No, but, yeah, but I also but know a bunch of gym they, bros they, they don't, don't eat. Right. Yeah. Well, and a bunch of gym bros look eat. kind of, they look kind of okay-ish. They're not obviously pro bodybuilders, but they look all right, because they get in, they get after it, like fucking train hard, and then they'll mm. go and eat shit when they get home. But okay, they, so training, okay. okay, training, diet. Nutrition. Supplements are at the bottom, so we're just stuck, stuck on the sleep and drugs. Sleep and the drugs. We're battling. We're battling. <laughs> I, I, I think. I think the drugs are. I think the drugs are third. <laughs> I think sleep's third, but yeah. I think sleep's third. Because a world without sleep is no world at all. 
that just means that just means I love drugs. I love drugs more than you guys. That's what it sounds yeah. like. <laughs> yeah. You're putting out a bad message here for us. No, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm putting out the fucking truth. My body, like I don't want to train yeah. without drugs. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Listen, when I'm on when I'm on, you know, a little bit of test, a little bit of growth. The pumps are fucking stupid, and I don't want to miss that. I don't. I miss that. I don't want to miss that. I don't want to miss that. I don't want to be I'm like, missing out. You I saw what Milos now. No, you listen. know what Milos said. Milos okay, said. Well, Milos said a workout without insulin is no workout at all. I didn't say I know, insulin. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't. I didn't say insulin. What I'm saying is, I could sleep for fucking twelve hours a day, and then go to the gym, and I'm still not going to get a pump like I would have got if I took a little bit of test and a little bit of growth. That's all I'm saying. You can't dispute that. You can't tell me that all the sleep is going to give you this awesome pump better than when you're on like G and I think you're undervaluing sleep. That's what I'm saying. I think you're overvaluing sleep and undervaluing drugs. <laughs> I like this. This is drugs. Okay, Did wait. you see my cycle I put up? I'm not undervaluing drugs. I put everything up there. But isn't, isn't, isn't the value of that, that pump that you get when you're on, can you imagine not having that? Yeah, I've got it right now. I'm flat as shit. I don't get a pump. Yeah, and it sucks. It's, and it sucks, right? That's what I'm saying. Oh, man. Yeah, but it sucks more to not sleep. I yeah, like man. sleep to me, man. Let me ask oh. you. I tell you what. When, when I, I suffered with like real bad insomnia after my motorbike accident, right? Yeah. It breaks your soul. Like, well, like, I'm not, like, but I'm not, but I'm not talking about zero sleep. I'm just saying sometimes, you know, I, I slept shitty for a long time. Four hours, five hours. I was, I was all right. Get through it. And I was a much, I was a much, I felt much better when I'm back up to six, seven, eight. I agree. I'm yeah. the same. Yeah. But if somebody said, hey, you can have seven hours of sleep and, and no drugs, or you can have four hours of sleep and drugs, I'd take the second scenario. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> well, no, James, if you're allowed four hours. James, you're the guy who wants to be Mr. Olympia more than anything. You're not going to be Mr. Yeah. Olympia without drugs. I ain't gonna be Mr. Olympia about fucking sleep. Four hours, you might be. Ronnie, no, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. But you're saying, on one hand, you're going no drugs is one option, and then four hours of sleep is the other option. I'm like, why is it no drugs and no sleep? (laughs) Because it's my show, and I make the fucking rules. And also, (laughs) also, to be fair, to be fair, I get up enough times in the night for a piss. I probably do only get about four hours sleep. Especially when you're dieting, I get that too. Yeah, yeah. So maybe I am, you know, already in that. Okay, so you guys honestly think at the okay, maybe let's not talk about the average person. Let's go highest level, right? At the highest level, you still keep your order the way it is. Yeah, because it, I, it I, dep- I do. Yeah, yeah. I do. I I'm think not you- fucking changing my my opinion from no man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, changing your opinion is growing. I'm not. I'm not looking to change your guys' so opinion. He's, so he's sleeping. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm not yeah. looking to change your opinion. I'm trying to have a re- real discussion. So, if you guys are right, I can go. You know what? I think they're right. So, all what I'm, what I'm asking is, is James, could you be Mr. Olympia with a little bit of sleep in the proper stack, or a lot of sleep and a little bit of drugs? That's tough, I, right? I, wait, I, think, I, think, I, think, I, I think they're both bullshit scenarios trying to be Mr. Olympia. I, hang on, the fact you changed it to a lot of sleep and a little bit more even. I, I, am, more I am even more on board with the sleep one now. <laughs> okay, okay. Like when you said no drugs and four hours of sleep, I was like, uh, okay, I'd rather have a lot of drugs and four hours. We, than have to no define, drugs. we have to define what a little bit of drugs is. Wait, what do you Graham. consider a little bit? I don't know. Graham. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, like, four shots a week. like if somebody said you can have uh, 500 milligrams of test and like two, I use a GH. But you can oh, have... 100%. I could smash on that, bro. Yeah. You guys are full oh, of shit. Oh, oh 100%. I'll, I'll fucking, you guys are just that. fucking lying for the camera. Oh, Listen, 100, I'll do no, that. 100%. I won my pro card on that. <laughs> no, you didn't. Oi, how'd you know? <laughs> um, how dare you speak of me in my amateur days? <laughs> I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. You know what? I'm not, I'm not dying on this hill. I just don't know. I'm not saying, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just like, it's actually a good question. 
Yeah. I've and seen what a genetic I've seen what a genetic elite bodybuilder, and I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but competed at the Olympia on pretty close to minimal fucking drugs. Yeah, well, I think if you're as genetically complete as as Luke was, or some of these guys are, then you can. Obviously, some people, and plus, we've I've already established by having Dr. Dean on the podcast that yeah. hy- hyper responders do exist. So some people can use a little <laughs> and get a lot out of it, and some people have to use a lot to get a lot out of it. So Absolutely. I didn't, I didn't think I always thought that was a myth. I didn't think it was real until Dr. Dean actually explained the mechanism in which yeah. your body breaks it down. So now I'm, I'm fully on board with whole, that whole. Well, Doctor Doctor Scott Stevenson was one of the first guys who was talking about enzymes and how it cleaves yeah. differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, okay. Well, we'll leave it. You know what? I will. I will. I'll. I'll. I'll bow out gracefully. I'll be like, okay. Sleep is third. Drugs is fourth. But I know nobody believes us. Whoever, <laughs> these fuckers. These don't, fuckers. These fuckers that are watching. Caveat these, it. No, no. These yeah, fuckers. Don't believe, these guys don't that don't are watching. Third. These Maybe guys that are watching that are, are going to say it's first. That's what they're going to exactly, say. Exactly. 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 Oh like, fuck! That 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 straight up isn't fucking true. Uh, one body part to have extreme vascularity, or where do you think it looks best? My cock. That's what I was gonna say. I like it most. I, 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 I most. I mostly like it on my fucking shaft. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't know what the big deal with vascular, vascularity is. I, I really don't get it. Like, I'll give you an example. If you look at Dwayne Walker this weekend, right? Or even, even. Yeah, even, no, no uh, vascularity. Even Hunter, right? You don't see yeah, any no veins and shit. And it, no. They both had people mis people mistake being vascular for being for being lean. lean. And it doesn't mean they're that. not. They don't. They don't always. They don't always mean the same thing. They don't. Oh, they a don't. lot of it's genetic, right? I mean, look at Frank. Yeah. Frank's like fucking yeah. veiny as fuck, and then but he's not any bigger. He's that all year round? Shredded. Yeah, he's like that all the time. Um, then you get then you get like Jay and Victor Martinez, and yeah, it's not a vein it's apart from the pretty, bicep. Just yeah. Well, I okay. Think, so, um, I, like, not, no, but I think Vascari looks good on like the legs, you know, like the inner thigh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I say that because yeah. I like my, I like my inner vein. You know what? I agree with you. I agree with James because I got a lot of uh, vascularity in my legs. I actually have decent amount, amount of vascularity when I get shredded everywhere, but I don't mm. like it in my chest. I don't feel like it looks good, mm. but I think it does look good in my quads. Mm. I do as well. Quads, it looks yeah. really good. It's cool in the shoulders. I think too. Oh, when you have that yeah, vein, yeah. That comes I think arms. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say thighs. You know when you know when a guy has vascular in his back, that's pretty cool too. Though, you ever see somebody yeah. do like a lat spread and they got like fucking veins crawling through their back? That's not something you see very like very often. Yeah, uh, that's tough. It's rare. I would say I'm gonna agree with James. Though I go with quads because sometimes when you're wearing tights, you can see the fucking veins through your yeah, your tights. yeah. It's I fucking, know Ronnie like when Ronnie would train in his leggings, you'd see it's yeah. fucking. Yeah, that's bad. Those, well, those bright, those bright yellow ones. And they Ve- yeah, veins pulsing through the fucking leggings. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, at how much of a caloric deficit is too much? At what point should you not drop cows anymore, but add more cardio? This is like a, it's kind of too vague. But you want to answer it's, it, guys? Uh, until you're in, until you're in shape. Yeah, but wait a minute, because I, I, what I'm trying, I want to try and get to an answer where, because. This could, could be, be hundred under, two hundred under, three hundred right. under. Yeah, it could yeah. be some. It could be somebody just starting, right? So, what is a good caloric deficit to start at? Start at, let's say that. Oh, so well, assuming you're at maintenance right now, right? Let's assume that would, you. Let's assume you're fifteen percent body fat. Uh, yeah, and you want to start losing some weight. Where I would put you. At, I would put you at three hundred a day deficit. Yes, okay, whether so that's from cardio or from diet. You create a 300 calorie deficit week one. Can I can I just say uh, to tell me if you agree with this? I would rather create the deficit from cardio than from food. I would. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's first. It, it, yeah. Early on, yeah. As as week one start point. I mean, unless if you're talking about a bodybuilder and they've got like their junk and cheat meals in, then I would clean those up first. No, right? what I'm tra- yeah. what I'm trying to say is this. Let's say somebody's cal- calories for the day are 3,000. Yeah, and, and you're and you're like, okay, I want to cut this guy's calories by 300. You're still going to leave their food at 3,000. You're just going to make them do 300 calories worth of cardio. Mm-hmm. Of cardio, yeah. Okay, okay, that's that's what I, I agree with that. Yeah. And then from there, if you want to keep pushing them, then do you add more cardio or do you start stripping the food a little bit? Um, again, you see how I, it depends on on how that initial drop does. Okay, um, and say, how they're feeling. 
let's say, let's say in general, I mean, obviously these things are all very specific. So nobody take any of this to heart. We're just trying to give you like a general idea. Mm -hmm. So if somebody does their first week of 300 calorie deficit cardio, but their maintenance is still 3000 food, food wise. The second week, if they, let's say they've dropped a little bit of weight, you're probably not going to change anything, right? Mm -hmm. Let's say they didn't drop any weight though. What are you going to do? Are you going to add more cardio or are you going to strip away food? I would, if, they, if they, nothing changed, I'd, I'd take away a bit of food. Okay, so they're going to go from 300 to what? 400 or 500 deficit? Uh, 300, so I'd take another 200 away. So they end up at 500. Okay, so then how yeah. often would you do those 200 calorie drops? Every time they're still uh, As needed, yeah. Okay, so if you do, let's say you do the initial 500, and they've gone like three weeks, and they've been losing weight the whole time, and then after three weeks, they stall. Then you're gonna mm-hmm. take another take another two hundred. Yeah, if it goes too deep in, then you might be looking at trying to pick up their metabolism a little. If it, you know what I mean, yes, that's when you start getting the deeper you get into that. But it, it takes a while before you're gonna to need to help someone's metabolism and, and and wake it back up again. But yeah, for the most part, you if you're going longer than a week and the weight's not budged, then I would look at another two hundred, another two hundred. And, okay, and, so. and you can, you you know, you can bump some cardio and take some food away. It doesn't all have to be from food. It doesn't yeah, all have to yeah. be from cardio. Just yeah, yeah, create yeah. that and it just create that energy imbalance. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there you guys go. Is it like a, a small blueprint as to what you should do? But obviously if you need more information, which you probably do, that's where Ben comes in as far as being co- like having a coach, because it's not all like, that's why I think Ben's having a hard time giving you a solid answer because it depends. There's so many different variables that that's why you work with a coach. So. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, what, what are a couple of things you were skeptical to try, but worked out better when you could better than you could have imagined diet training, etc. Like what, is there anything you guys did that you thought was going to be bullshit, but then it ended up being good. Go ahead, Ben. Yep. Go ahead. Rest you I wish I, I, Again, we kind of spoke about it earlier, but taking those more rest days, I thought six days a week yeah. or training doubles was going to be better for me. And yeah. just as long as I could pound the food to keep up with the training, it doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. James, yeah. anything you can I think suppose, of? Uh, maybe with Patrick lowering my protein. Yeah, I would have a tough time. Yeah, cause, 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 yeah because like mentally you think protein's the be all and end all, don't you? Yeah. Coming to yeah. bodybuilding, you're taught that uh, the more protein you consume, the bigger you're going to be. And uh, dropping my protein from like 275 grams cooked weight to like 170 per a mil, you're initially going to think, fuck, what's going to happen to my body? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. That would, that would yeah. be tough for me. I think but, for me, yeah, it's, no I think for me, it's the same as a uh, uh, Ben. Cause when I started working with John Meadows, I took on his training program Yeah. and I was doing my own for a long time. And then I was like, this is not enough fucking shit. Like I can't, I'm not going to look good like this. And yeah. I was so, dramatically better after doing his program. So in summary, we're saying train less and eat less protein. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That's not, I, what I'm trying to say is, okay, this, this is why things are all relative, right? When I used yeah. to train, I used to beat the shit out of my body. Like I didn't leave the gym unless I was like dead. Like I'm like, I have to be dead to the point where like exhausted. Then I can leave yeah. the gym. And that's not right. There's, got, there's a point where it's, you've gone too far. And I think... Most people don't train like that. So saying to people train less is not going to be accurate for the average person because most people aren't training hard enough. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you train... It is a fine line. Yeah, but if you do train like a fucking animal and you're sore all the time and you're maybe you're getting hurt all the time, so that's one of the things that John helped me with. He gave me a program yeah. that was more structured and it would force me to leave the gym after I was done his program, which seemed like yeah. it wasn't... It wasn't as yeah. hard, right? You probably felt like you could throw another two fucking exercises at the end. And as yeah. far as eating less for James, the caveat there is he's fucking doubled or tripled his carbs. So there's a lot of... Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah. yeah. Your macros ratio has been modified to suit. Yeah. Um, and you're prioritizing certain macronutrients over others and they tend to yield more of a, a benefit than I thought. I always yeah. thought that protein was more important than it is. But again, the... the Still important. But... but again, the part that is going to be tricky for the average person is there's no way the average person trains as hard as you do, James. So they're not going to need four grams of carbs per pound of body weight. No, it's no, no, no. just going to make them fat. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, you, of course. It'd be overkill. You have to be able to train, like to do what we're doing, you have to be able to train with a certain level of intensity and 
in uh, volume to be able to take mm. the amount of food that James is eating. Yeah. You need to create, you've got to create that demand, like we would say. If you're not, you literally got to dig a big enough hole, but not one that you can't get out of. I think for the average person, a 40, 40, 20 is, is a good way to go. Like the average person, right? Because James, it sounds like you're doing more of like a 30, 50, 20. Like 30% protein, 50% carbs, 20% yeah, fat. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. Maybe even more. Yeah, and I think, so, I, think, I think the average person would just get fat if they did that. Yeah, no, definitely. I think they would because they're not going to have that energy expenditure. Yeah. I think my, I think my high day with Justin is 70 carbs. <laughs> Holy shit. I gotta, I've, never tried, like, you know, I've never tried that. I got to try that. It's like zero fat, all carbs, minimal protein. Like, protein how, is how like much carbs? How much carbs? Uh, 1,200. Wow, on the high day, it's one 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 day a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, And and again, it's about it's about creating that demand. So, like, I'm by the time I get around to it, I'm pretty depleted. I'm flat. My body just got yeah, yeah. Yeah. That that demand isn't created on that day. You have that food. It's created throughout the week. Yeah, Yeah. and that's what people Um, need to understand as well is that when you're getting given a certain amount of food like that on a on a a day that's essentially a refeed. Yeah, it's refeeding you from the the amount of work oh, the, done over the prior week yeah and, and the days leading into the high day i'm digging myself out harder i'm trying i'm like fuck it i gotta like if i go harder now then that i'm gonna soak up all that food tomorrow yeah. you know yeah, what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah, yeah. slingshot effect slingshot effect yeah all right so uh i don't I, don't I know we don't do this anymore but this guy asked me like two weeks ago and i, I forgot and i forgot last week again but it, it was his birthday and he asked me to be roasted for his birthday which i have no idea how that makes any sense but he wants to be roasted for his birthday, and I told him we would. Okay. And then I forgot to do it, so we got to do our best. Kind of sounds, kind of sounds dirty. Does he, does uh, he need on air or? Sure I want to get roasted. What do you want for your birthday, darling? I want to get roasted. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> All right, let's just. Let's do it. Let's it's do a different, it. it's it's a a different channel. Are we are we this, gonna be really cold. This is oh, no, giant, he's... giant aesthetics. Eric. Right, let's click on Eric. Eric Holy shit, he's six foot five. He's six wow. five. All right, let's start. Let's start. He's a bald cunt. <laughs> You're a bald cunt with no arms. <laughs> Where's your triceps, son? Where's your shoulders and arms? It all fucking, it's all back. It's just, and you're, all, you're all mid-back, you bastard. Yeah. <laughs> you're all mid-back. Not even back. Mid-back. Yeah, you're just mid-back. You're just mid-back. Oh, let's see this form. Here we go. I love doing the form ones. Uh, okay. Do you, slow, do you want to slow it down a bit, son? <laughs> right, that's playing in slow-mo as well. <laughs> That's pretty good weight. That's pretty good weight. He's it, strong. He compared to his fucking back, he's got no legs. You're not meant to be nice. To Look at those You're not legs. Meant to say it's good for him. Look at those. <laughs> the fucking legs are just sticks. I don't even know how he's moving the weight. <laughs> is it the BFG? How is he moving the fucking weight? I don't know how they hold his upper body up because his back's pretty meaty and his fucking spindle legs gonna snap. <laughs> Look at this well, shit. Your knees are wider than your calves. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you fucker. <laughs> it's your birthday. You fucking asked for it. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Oh, this is horrible. This didn't even, there's not even any transformation. It's just better lighting. <laughs> on out, you're, you're outside to inside under a downward flight. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The shoulder to waist ratio is as bad as mine. It's just straight down, but he has no muscle. At least I have some size to go with my shitty shoulder to waist ratio. This is oh, fucking. Oh, mate. You got a long way to go, Eric. Bro. Bro, need to get some. Uh, He's got the Punisher. Let's see what he says. Sunday cardio at cardio day, and a little ab work, and some calf raises, and a few sets for delts. What else are you gonna do? <laughs> Why are you well, fucking needs so many to? Times? He needs to do more fucking calves and delts. Yeah, it's not working. Do whatever you're doing. Let's see what we got here. Got the pencils blue. back out. <laughs> I wouldn't wear shorts if my legs were that small. Where's the fucking dildo on the platform? Hey, Hello. I know this gym. This guy's from Mississauga. I used to train here every fucking day. I love this gym. Yeah, Wait, that's, that's some, that, yeah, that you love this gym, but he this guy's fucking tainting it. <laughs> Eric, I'm sorry we're being so mean, dude, but you asked he's give, for it. He's giving your gym a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Where I feel like I feel oh, really like at, you. Look I, at this. This is beautiful. Hey, bow your legs a little bit. Bend your knees, son. You can't stand with straight legs. <laughs> bikini, Come on. Bikini can better your straight legs twice a week. My legs are almost ready. Oh, ready? Dude. Ready Eric. for what? I'd stick, I'd, I'd stick to the back shots if I was him. 
Let's leave the legs alone. You guys are this, fucking wait, wait, let's see. This is the most ruthless roast I think I've ever I want to see that shot with his phone. <laughs> let me see the shot of his phone and his this fucking one? picture in the mirror. This one? <sighs> Mate. This is straight. Can we That's zoom a- in on his face? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to roast his face. i got a terrible face. I can't roast anyone's face, but hey. Well, that's why we could... Oh, here's another one. Look at this one. I wanted to roast me now. That's a good shot, to be fair. Look at the downwards light on that one. I think I think uh, James is starting Plus. to feel bad. His roasting has changed dramatically in the last three pictures. I, 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 do you know what? I, I do. I feel terrible. I know. I don't know why people want this. I don't know what... I don't know what... Oh, Give me a yeah. reason to... Look at a bridge <laughs> shot. A bridge <laughs> shot. Influencer. Fucking hell. I don't know what would possess somebody to ask. For... Look at these shoes. The thing man. is, they're skinny jeans and they're still, they're still loose. <laughs> What the fuck, mate? Listen, listen, bro. That's a disgrace. That's a fucking. At disgrace. least he's got. At least he's got them fucking covered up. These, sh- start. <laughs> These are shoes, man. I can't get over the fucking Velcro shoes. It's killing me. They would not fit my girlfriend. <laughs> Honestly, look at this one. Oh, he's got another pair on. <laughs> he looks hey, good. Here. Wait, I- wait, wait, wait. He looks good here. This is pretty good. Like, stomach looks tight. <sighs> I mean, the arms slow. The arms Come are. On. Yeah, I'm just trying to yeah, fucking say. Looks, save, look, looks I'm, Grace. I'm All right, to, he he looks good there. Would you be happy looking like that? Would you do a photo shoot? You look like that. I wouldn't take. There's another bridge shot. What's his thing with bridges? Look, go up and right. There's another bridge <laughs> shot. <laughs> hey boys, <laughs> looks like he's about to draw two guns out of his holsters. Yeah. <laughs> what else have we got here? About to do, it's about the fucking showdown. Yeah, I wouldn't see. I wouldn't. Man, I I look like shit right now. I I that's why I haven't been posting a lot of stuff like physique we, pictures. We, well, because we all look shit, we can roast because he can say we look shit as well. So yeah. oh, he's a he's a fan of the man though. There you go. So see, this is why it's really hard because he's a good man, clearly. Yeah, but, <laughs> but he asked. But, but he asked us for it. Look, I just like uh, that's a crazy physique. Yeah, it is a crazy. Physique. A shame, a shame. This guy hasn't got that physique. Isn't it a crazy physique? It's really fucking nuts. That's a really good picture. I'd just rather just look at his picture than roast this guy. Yeah, we can just stay here for a bit. The lion's in the legs, like right up to the hip. Beautiful. Yeah. I think we end the roast on that. Yeah. Yeah, fuck the guy. Luke's more important. See that? He's a good soul. Bless him. Yeah. He's in our club. Sorry, mate. We're taking it all back. Yeah. Sorry, you Eric. Good, you have a good spirit, Eric. Wait all a minute. Right, wait a minute. There's one more. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what color are they? Come on, Eric. What the fuck, man? Why is he doing this like big old like spread though? Kind of. Men's, that's men's physique, isn't it? He's in a men's physique shot. Just, just chill out. Your dog doesn't Listen. give a shit about your laps. I think we were better to just do that. Okay. Rewind you know time. Rewind time. There you go. Good job. That, Eric, thanks a lot, dude. I hope you had a good birthday. I have no idea why you asked for that. And, uh, and to be fair, you don't look that fucking bad at all. We're no, just we're being just, really we're just being, hypercritically yeah. horrible. We're just being and at six five, at six five, you're he's a pretty meaty back on him as well. You know, it's funny. You can tell we're all not complete assholes because we all actually feel bad after doing that. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't yeah. like doing them. By the way, I just want to point that one out. But that's why we don't do them anymore. And I don't, I don't like doing them no. either. But this guy asked me, and I for his birthday, and I'm like, fuck, all right. And then I forgot because I kind of didn't want to do it. So I think I kind of forgot sub like consciously. Oh. But, so, and yeah, then he. On messaged again so all right happy birthday eric happy birthday eric you crazy weird man <laughs> all right let's uh let's do a couple more and we'll wrap it up i'm starving um if you had to do an off-season eating the same exact meal six times a day every day for eight weeks what is it kind of said it already the steak and eggs no yeah but is that because we wait, wait 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 this question i know it's not saying that but like if you had to is it a case of what meal you'd like to eat because of the taste or is it a case of what do you think beneficial wise you know what if you mm. were to eat the same thing yeah like if you were, I'll read okay, it again eat the same thing I'll, six re- times a day. I'll read it again yeah, to think- you guys decide didn't decipher what you think I need to if, decipher, yeah. if you had to do an off season eating if you had to do an off season eating the same exact meals six times a day every day for eight we eight weeks what is it I think it needs I- to be a beneficial meal well I think so too but yeah, but mine would be my my beneficial meal and the one I would choose are probably the same, same thing. thing yeah. I would go. Yeah, but, but go I don't ground, think steak and eggs would be the most beneficial. No, my, my, mine would be ground beef, rice, 
soya sauce. Mine would be ground beef, pasta, pasta sauce. Mine would be olive oil, tender stem broccoli, rice, and salmon. Oh, salmon's good. Oh, I said so, see, I said salmon a while back, and I got ripped for it. But you know what? Salmon in the right, UK well, tastes it. salmon in the UK tastes way better than salmon out here. I People wouldn't eat salmon. salmon. I, I can't. The only salmon I like is like raw, like sushi, like raw salmon. Oh, we got some good Sa- salmon. Yeah. Salmon in the UK is actually good. It, t- it doesn't taste from, the same. It's all from Norway. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, I'd go pasta, man. I could eat pasta with ground beef all fucking day long. And do you think that'd be the most? Do you think that'd be the most beneficial as well? I actually I ate that for most of my meals one off season. I had a great off season. Yeah. I mean, I probably gained, I probably gained a lot of fat with it. I mean, there's a lot of fat in the ground. So beef, I'm, but yeah. Salmon. But um, yeah, but that's good fat. I'm just a lot of saturated fat in the fucking ground beef. So I probably would get chubby, but I put on a lot of fucking muscle. I mean, ground beef and pasta is a because I can put down a lot of pasta in one sitting. Yeah, yeah. You know especially I mean? with, or, especially if you've got that sauce on it, like a marinara sauce on it. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yeah. Game we're back to, every time we get back to food, we just trail off. <laughs> See, because I sneakily ate during this podcast, I'm now not hungry, so I'm past that phase. Oh, so you're not. Oh, I didn't even I, see you eat. I, was, I remember you asking. For, I was yeah, just thinking I it. it. Didn't you see a yeah, it down? Look, like a whole bowl of. Uh, I, I I think I chose to not look subconsciously because so I was hungry. I'm, I'm not watching a guy eat. <laughs> I've even got my salt and pepper grinders. Oh, she me. brought she brought you everything. Fuck. She brought me all up on a tray like this. Here, sir. Fuck she was like now. Four. She literally came up to me like this. Wow. She was like, "Here's your dinner, sir." I, I, gotta, like, Thank t- you, I, I gotta talk to my wife. Summer. Yeah. Yeah, summer. Time to get to work. <laughs> um, let's see here. Would you rather have your thoughts broadcasted so that everyone will know always know what you're thinking, or Not never that. be or never be allowed to wear clothes but keep your thoughts to yourself? Yeah, go naked. Fuck it. I don't give a shit. I look alright half naked. I don't give a shit. You can't you know, go anywhere. You, know, you can't go any. anywhere. Yeah, I can. I just get arrested. You know that question would have been so much better, boys, if it was like. Wait, hang on. Like, I don't go anywhere anyway. You don't. You stay in the box. But, when we're locked down, that. my gym's here. I own it. I can train with my dick out if I want. I don't want to picture you squatting. I don't want to picture you squatting naked. Your sack hitting the floor. Unfollow <laughs> me. A little ball mark. A little ball mark <laughs> repeatedly. That's when you know you're squatting good if the same ball mark happens over and over again. <laughs> Let's get a little, like almost like a little, it'll be like that, little two egg cup shaped. You, you can draw a line of chalk on the floor <laughs> as a marker, and that's where you've got to put your that's balls. Where your balls the groove. That's the, that's the groove. Sit them in the groove each time. Just open the, open, the ta- open the taint, as they say. Um, I was just going to think that question. I know this is me because I always go off on one, but like, where, you know, your thoughts have to be all broadcasted, like, or imagine the other way around, like, imagine you can never express yourself. No, I like I his just, question. I like his question better. You like this has got some naked shit in it. I, no, like, I was I, getting. No, I, I wanted like, to go deep. I like it because your question's easy. I would just not express myself. No, because imagine never being able to tell someone you love them. Oh, the, the challenges that you would face in life. You know what? You never I, tell I, I would, how much you care. I anybody can know what I'm thinking. I talk about it fucking all day long on my podcast. I'm not expressing my shit, shit left day and night. So like. Yeah, but this is like this. This means like literally. No, I'm talking about the real. The, the real. Word, like, you know. Some of you are like when you get on the podcast with like your Caucasian friends and you're actually thinking, you fucking honky motherfucker, what are you doing here? You know what <laughs> never, I mean? I've like, never thought, like I've never thought there. that. I never ever <laughs> thought, that's never crossed my mind once. But since you said it, it's fucking hilarious. Now every time you come on, I'm going to think that honky motherfuckers. <laughs> well, that's what I mean. And then the world would hear it and, and they'd be out there. I don't think but, I've, I mean, aside from cursing like the haters, I don't know how much, Ben, how much do I hide on the podcast? You you hear all my shit. <laughs> enough. You think I hide enough? How bad would it be if everybody could hear the shit I tell you? Uh, would it be? No, I, I I I do think you're pretty open. But the conversation we had yesterday, where you, the general theme of it was I hate people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so wait, 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 let's rephrase that. I hate fucking trolls. And I will say that on my podcast. I don't mind if they could hear that. Well, also, at the beginning of this podcast, you said, I hate everyone except for four people. <laughs> well, that's wow. because that's usually because I hate trolls. And then sometimes it feels like there's so many fucking everyone. trolls <laughs> that I hate everybody. No, I... I yeah. No, in, I, in, I don't know in, how in bad defense, it... In your defense, I don't think you're... 
you're not too different off air to like i, mean, I don't pretty- know how much i would care if everybody knew what i thought i mean i'd probably be a little bit more vulnerable but I, for the most part, my feelings are pretty much out there. People know I have anxiety, and I mean, people know you wet your bed, James. I mean, how much are we yeah. really? Hi- how much are we really hiding? Not a lot. Not a lot. Right. There's things, but very small things, and they sometimes just for something to reveal later. I mean, yeah, there, imagine, imagine, I mean, imagine if it was almost like Tourette's, right? Where say you walked into oh, a public place and you saw somebody, and your thought got broadcast instantly to everyone in the I was room. just thinking that, like. If I saw somebody at the bank I didn't like, and I was like, ah, look at this motherfucker. And he heard me say, look at this motherfucker. Yeah. 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 I think I still do. I do that rather than, okay. In both scenarios, either rather than being naked all the time and rather than not being able to express myself, I would rather everybody just know what I'm thinking. Yeah. I don't mind being naked. I don't, you can't go anywhere. I don't go anywhere anywhere. Honestly, I can't tell you how little I go anywhere. Hey, uh, like I, I, I haven't left podcast. the house. I'll, I'll call you back okay. in five minutes. Fuck yeah. Sorry, is it talking I, Greg? Who I haven't that? left. He sounded British. No, he's Arab. Well, he sounded really British. I was like really confused. <laughs> I haven't left this house. Okay, but wait a minute. That's because we're in gym. But that's because we're in lockdown. If if we yeah, weren't locked down. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, all right. In the past like eight years aside from going to shows and to the supermarket which my wife now does for me the only place i go to is the gym well now the gym here is mine and there's no one in it okay you can be naked all the time i'm gonna want to i want to go to the gym i want to go to the supermarket i want to take wait wait wait. can i can can i wear a hat and a bandana no no Uh, fuck that (laughs) then you can all hear what i think okay you're all pricks (laughs) james what do you think man how bad are your um, thoughts? How bad are your thoughts? That's what really what we're asking. I think I'm actually quite bad. I don't really want to say. <laughs> I think so too. I think if I you can tell, can't you? Yeah, yeah. You can tell. There's I something am. in there. So, yeah. yeah, there is. <laughs> Trust me, there is. <laughs> so I think maybe I should be naked. Really? Yeah. Is, is it that yeah. bad? Is it that bad? It probably caused World War Three. Holy shit! So I should probably, you know, because I do think some things sometimes. I'm quite bad. I'm very like, but I don't say nothing. Because, like, you know, give, give, me, one, give, me, give me an example. Give I, me an example. I, I, I can't because I'm really horrible. Yeah. Give me I, the like, dark sense. I've got a dark sense of humor as well. And sometimes I find it funny. I, 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 no I one have, else I, would. I have a dark sense of humor as well. And it's not always going to be welcomed. So I have to yeah. Do you think a dark sense of humor is, is enough to not say anything, though? It depends how dark the humor is that time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'd, I'd rather be naked because I just think there's certain personality traits to myself that probably shouldn't be projected out there to the masses um, i'm trying to think of I'm, the- I'm kind i'm kind and i love people and stuff but i'm i'm very happy that i can think stupid things and keep them to myself yeah Sometimes. Some, i'm trying to think of the worst things i think and i'm like would that be bad if everybody knew and i can't think of anything absolutely horrible but i'm also drawing a blank right now so couple, my wa- my my I, I can guarantee i'd ask denise this, if i ask my wife this because some of the stuff that I'll comment to her, if we were in bed watching the series, and I'll make a like, I'll make a very racist joke. Yeah, or, or, or something about like maybe someone's disabled or something like that. And she, I, just because I want her to go, like, what the yeah. fuck did you just say? Yeah, like yeah. that kind of shit. But that's where my brain, it's not, I don't have to think about it. I knee jerk reaction is to say yeah. the worst thing possible, like to, yeah, yeah, to get yeah. a reaction. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what? It's some like of that a lot stuff, of this a lot of it comes down to things that you've watched as well. Like what, what programs do you watch? Like I used to love watching like American dad and family guy. And it's a little bit, you know, a little bit, bit twisted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, you know, so I sort of just think, I know that some of the things shouldn't be said. All right. But, you know, it doesn't mean you can't be a nice person. <laughs> All right. We'll leave it at that guys. I'm going to wrap up cause I have a video a to date. do. I have a video to do and a photo shoot. So I will, uh, and I got to and I, I is, do. It food, is it a food photo shoot? Is it no, photo shoot? Uh, well, these are our new shirts. These are our new hostile. Nice, nice, we nice, did, nice. We did some red and blue and some different colors. So I got to cool. get some, got to get some photos for the website and uh, Sweet. I, I got to eat and shit like that. So anyways, cool, bro. thank you guys. Pleasure. We'll do this again soon. Honestly, very kind. All right, thank gentlemen. You. Thanks a lot, dude. We'll talk okay, to you later. Have a, See you later. Have a nice one, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. So, bye. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, share with your friends and like the video. And if you get a chance, check out the description for all the different links to all the different places you can find Hostile and myself. 
And lastly, check out Hostile.com for our new line of supplements and all of our apparel and gear. Thanks again for watching.